John, this is Diane. I just want to make sure you knew I was on. Yeah, I got you, Chuck, and Eric. So uh, okay. Oh, we still got a few to go then. Okay. Yeah, we still have Mary and Alina, and Fran and Gail. Hold on one second. Gail Miller's on now. Sorry for that. I joined the wrong Teams link. All right. Thank you, Gail. Hi, yeah. jo John. This is Alina. I don't. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Just want to let you know I'm I'm here. Great. Thank you. Hi, this is Eric Sklar. I'm here. I apologize. All right. Thank you, Eric. And Mary Kreisman, are you on? Yes, I am. I'm here. Great. So, and Fran. And Senator Pavley. Uh, we do have a quorum, uh, however, if we want to get started. Uh, and I'll have staff track down Fran. I think in the uh, the amount of uh, meeting we have planned before us today, I think we probably should get started. Uh, and just one more check for Fran Pavley. Senator Pavley, are you on? Okay. Well, anyway, I think we should get started. We do have a quorum, Mr. Chair. Uh, so if you're okay with that, uh, we will begin. John Am, can you um, and staff just keep assisting Fran? Uh, it could just simply be technology. Yes, I am. And let all attendees know when she does join. Yes. So, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is John Donnelly. I'm the executive director of the Wildlife Conservation Board. Uh, you all have joined the Wildlife Conservation Board meeting of December 8th, 2020. Uh, this is a meeting. Uh, this is not customary for WCB to meet in December. However, this meeting is a result of a project that was considered and deferred at our August 26th meeting earlier this year. Uh, so it's a very small agenda today. We have two items on the agenda. First is just public comments for items that are not on the agenda. And then uh, the project itself, the Rancho Homol Ecological Reserve Land Exchange. Uh, so with that, I will, uh, you know, before we get into this, I just want to take a minute. Just I hope that everybody is staying healthy and well. I know that we're all experiencing and living through uh, some serious time here in California and well across the nation. And I just hope that everybody's um, safe. Your family, your friends, your acquaintances are staying healthy, and that we're all successful navigating the the pandemic uh, the best that we can. Uh, and I just hope that uh, we continue to do that. Uh, and, you know, the numbers right now are pretty disheartening, but, you know, hopefully with the vaccines coming out that uh, we can actually see a, a bend in the curve and we can start uh, uh, opening things back up. So with that, uh, we will take action on the Rancho Homo Land Exchange project today. Uh, I, before I do uh, the roll call, I will just go through the meeting logistics just so uh, Fran has a, a chance to get on. So for folks listening today, the meeting is being conducted via Microsoft Teams and through telecommunications. So please, please mute your phones and or your computers. If you mute your phones and you're called on to speak or would like to speak at some point into the meeting, use star six to unmute your cell phone. Once you speak, please mute yourself again. Uh, for those using the telephone system, uh, you can download and access the presentation that will be given today via the Wildlife Conservation Board's website. You go to our website, you pull down 
the presentation from the meetings tab in the on the website. The format of the meeting this morning, I will ask for public comments for items related to the Rancho Humboldt project consistent with, uh, with I will ask under item number two for any public comment that's not associated with the Rancho Homo Ecological Reserve. And then we'll move into an agenda item number three. I will notice letters of support and or opposition received since the August meeting. I won't be reading those letters of support into the record that I read in uh, last August. They continue to be part of the record and will remain so. Uh, I will then introduce Jason Yee, who is staff of the Wildlife Conservation Board, and he'll provide a short, brief overview of the project. And then Colin Mills, our staff attorney, will also provide uh, a presentation. He will go into more detail and then answer questions and uh, address concerns and or considerations that were raised back at the August meeting and then provide any subsequent information to that subsequently. At the end of the presentation, I will ask for board member comments, questions, and take those at that time, and then I will ask for public comments. If, however, the board, any board member has a question or needs clarification during the presentation, please speak up and or raise your hand, and we'll, uh, we'll address that during that time. For public comments, uh, for any member of the public Wishing to make a comment, please state your name and affiliation. Watch your writing. <coughs> order the public comment for today uh, will be for those who filled out a speaker card in advance. I think we have 82 speakers that have done that, so I will be calling on those first. And I've arranged the speaker card list in no particular order. So uh, just be prepared, to, uh, and I will read the names two or three in advance so that you're prepared. Uh, and then the next, after the speaker cards, I will ask anybody that raises their hand or wishes to uh, make, us, make a comment, please use the uh, raise your hand feature on Teams. And then you'll remember, if you're gonna make a comment, please remember to uh, unmute yourself and then remute yourself. And then I think probably really importantly also is public members at our last August meeting, we allowed three minutes per speaker. This meeting we're going to allow for two minutes per speaker. And so please make your comments concise and brief. Uh, and I will ask that if you hear a lot of the same information over and over and over, uh, while you're certainly welcome to uh, state your comment, uh, you know, just be mindful and considerate of the time that we have today. This meeting is scheduled to go from uh, eight this morning till noon today. And starting at noon, we will have a quorum issue. So it's my goal to move the, 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 the project through uh, within the four hour time limit. Uh, once all speakers conclude, the board will deliberate, go back and, uh, and the staff will be are able to answer questions or take any comments that you all have. And then hopefully we'll be in a position for the board to take action and vote on the proposal before you today. So is there any questions or comments from board members uh, on the logistics of the meeting today? All right, hearing none. Uh, so I will go ahead and perform the roll call. So Mr. Chuck Bonham. I'm here. Alina Bokde. Here. Gail Miller. I see your initials. Uh, I think you're muted, Gail. All right, we'll come back to Gail. Diane Colborn. Here. Rand Pavley. Here. Mary Creesman. Here. And Eric Sklar. Here. Great, thank you. We do have a quorum. Gail, uh, I see your initials. Oh, hey, John, here. Okay, great. So all board members are present. 
So with that, we'll go into item number two. This is a public forum for items not on this agenda. Uh, does any board member want to make any opening comments or anything before we get into item number two? All right, hearing none. Item number two, is there any member of the public wishing to speak during this time? Uh, we have not received any speaker cards. And just checking on the. Um, and Celeste, is there anybody who raised oh, Jane Velez Mitchell? Speaking, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much. I want to speak broadly about what we are doing to our lands that are supposed to be preserved for wildlife, for habitat. Please, everybody, consider that we are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction right now. You can do one Google search and find that we humans have destroyed 68% of wildlife vertebrates in the last 60 years. We know that wildfires in Northern California and right here in Southern California have destroyed habitat for many threatened and endangered species and other species that need somewhere to live. And yet there is this mindset that leaving habitats like ecological reserves, whether it's here in Playa del Rey at the Bayona wetlands or in San Diego, somehow is a waste. This morning, I saw an egret. I got within six feet of him or her, and it was a priceless moment. And I thought, they have no idea. They have no idea that people who um, have decided that their role in life is to somehow monetize these, these precious lands are gonna wipe you off the face of the earth. We are right now in a pandemic that is a zoonotic illness that jumped from animals to humans because of our disrespect of nature. Governor Newsom has said we need to come up with nature-based solutions. But what are we doing? We, California, considered some of the most environmentally friendly uh, regions of the world, seem to be okay. hell-bent on destroying habitats. Don't okay, please wrap Bayona. up your comments. Uh, remember, we have two minutes to speak this morning. Don't bulldoze Biona. Don't destroy the habitats in San Diego. Wake up. Be on the be on the force for good, not on the force for destruction. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Looks like Sarah W has a hand up. Sarah Long. I want to speak on the uh, Proctor Valley trade. Okay. This is public comment, general public comment. Right, yeah, this is general public comment. We were not going to be hearing any comments about the agenda item itself at this time. Okay. Okay. And I was uh, remiss, board members, I do want to Oh, there's Robert Van Hoke. Uh, hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Remember, oh. you have two minutes. Okay, thank you. I shouldn't need that amount of time. My name is Robert Young Van de Hoek, and I am a wildlife biologist that has worked for the Bureau of Land Management in the United States Department of Interior and I worked on lands exchanges and I worked on the Carrizo Plain um, federal lands there during the Bush administration and Clinton administration years, first Bush. And uh, there I noticed wonderful things uh, with uh, the two ecological reserves and then a WCB purchase um, approval that happened to make the Carrizo Plain state lands even larger um, and that has been wonderful for helping the tule elk uh, wildlife species and uh, expand and have more habitat and making the land contiguous to the Los Padres National Forest lands on the west 
and it's just been it was just really great to work on bringing back the tule elk to the Carrizo Plain and being in the helicopter with wildlife biologists of the Department of Fish and Wildlife and holding a pronghorn antelope, a few of them, and putting solve on releasing them. It's, it's just a really beautiful uh, thing. To, and to know the WCB was involved in that. And then similarly in Los Angeles County, that was in San Luis Obispo County, Carrizo Plain. Then in Los Angeles County, uh, almost 20 years ago, I witnessed WCB approval of money for purchasing the Bayona wetlands, and that became an ecological reserve shortly thereafter. So I, I have two examples of, and I've been working there as a wildlife biologist, and it's just wonderful uh, how funds and and the board in those past uh, decades have been really wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Great. Thank you for your comment. Christina? Uh, Marcia Hanscom, you have your hand raised. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, honorable board members, Marcia Hanscom, the Biona Wetlands Institute. Um, I'm speaking because when I read that, uh, well, first, I just want to say thank you to the Wildlife Conservation Board because the Wildlife Conservation Board has spent millions and millions of dollars to protect lands in this state. And in fact, uh, in 2003, I was the last time I testified before this board. Uh, you so wonderfully supported the acquisition of the Biona wetlands on the coast of Los Angeles. Unfortunately, uh, maybe because of, of at that time the state was broke, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife has, from that day until now, been pretty neglectful of that land and, in fact, has been mostly an absentee landowner and has done something to the other item you have on your agenda today. Um, they've made deals with private entity, entities like SoCal Gas and like the Bay Foundation, entities that uh, really do not have the same mission in life that the California Department of Fish and Wildlife has. And those deals will mean the destruction of all of that land that you spent a hundred million dollars for, and we appreciate that you spent Marcia. that money, but we do not want the land destroyed. Thank you. Great, thank you. Christina, one last time. All right. You know, other hands raised. Is there anybody on the phone wishing to speak? Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Jade Celentano. Mm -hmm. And I am just calling to support the Rancho Homo Land Exchange. It's my understanding that it will expand okay. the reserve. Well, we'll take your we'll take your comment during uh, the item number two. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Okay, is there anyone else? All right, hearing none, we'll, uh, we'll go into item number, uh, agenda item number three. Uh, but before we do, hello, I was remiss. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, I, I'm so sorry. This is Christina. Um, am I still allowed to speak? Yes, please. A few seconds. As long oh, as thank you very much. Item number three. Um, the Rancho Hobo project. Number. Okay. Um, well, um, th this it, it relates to both, to that and um, to Bologna wetlands. Um, so, I mean, you know, basically, um, the citizens in California, we really object to leaders who are supposed to protect um, our 
wetlands and you know natural habitats um, have actually betrayed a lot of the people who live here and the lands and, and all the wildlife. And we're very disappointed that leadership has orchestrated high-end developing of, of homes in these protected areas. And these folks have a very clear conflict of interest. And, you know, we really question their ability to represent whom they're supposed to represent. So we ask that people consider resignation. Um, and there's, you know, San Diego situation. There's also the Los Angeles situation as well with the Bologna wetlands and um, the constructing projects just disguised as being a restoration when they are installing new fossil fuel infrastructure. They're replacing pipes, adding new directional drilling into gas storage facilities under the wetlands. And they are proposing to bulldoze it. And this is absolute destruction and it's not restoration. And the wetlands are all in harmony. And um, you know, any words that will disguise what they're doing is a clear case of destruction. And you folks are there to protect these sensitive, valuable lands that have endangered species living on them. Depend on you, each one of you. So I really hope you all do the right thing. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, but before. All right, we'll move on to item number three uh, in the agenda. But before I do, Hi, I just I, want. Excuse me, I've had my hand up. Did anybody okay. not see me? This yes. is Lisa Carly. Lisa. OK, am, please go. I, uh, Hi, my name is Lisa Carlin. I am retired. I'm an, I'm, an, I'm an activist. And I wanted to speak about what's going on with the Biona wetlands. When I discovered the drilling and I discovered that this was really being brought forth to the public as a restoration project. When I looked into it, it was very curious to me to find out that this was really not, the agenda was for industry and not for people and certainly not for the 1700 of species, species of animals, including many of whom are on the endangered species list and will be going extinct. And I got involved, I just felt compelled that this is just incredibly wrong and that the public doesn't realize what's going on. So I really, I, so I stand here as a, a resident of Los Angeles, someone who is speaking out against the abomination of how this restoration project can be framed in a way to restore it when in fact the idea is it's going to destroy it and it's going to benefit um, Southern California Gas and some of the other um, uh, industrial organizations. This restoration can be done very, very minimally without sacrificing lives. And there are 1,700 species of animals that live there. So I just want to raise awareness and I want you to know that we are watching and um, I am writing about this. And the public needs to know, because when I talk to people from other, or, other conservation organizations, they say things like, this area is dead. I've appeared at Coastal Commission meetings, and I've spoken, and I've listened to testimony. Okay, you need to, you need to finish up your comments, please. I will. I will. And I listen to other organizations like Coastal Commission, people coming up re representing industry who say this area is dead. I've been through this area. It is anything but dead. So we okay. need to bring the truth All right, your, your time's up, ma'am. Your All time's right. up, thank you. All right, is there anybody else? Yeah, and just a reminder, for those that have spoken, if you could go ahead and un, um, put your hand down, that would be helpful so we can help track who's spoken or who hasn't. So right now it looks like a couple folks need to just un, put their hand down, click on it again to put your hand down, thanks. Okay, let's move into item number three uh, on the agenda, the Rancho Homo Ecological Reserve Land Exchange. Uh, so to start, uh, Mr. Jason Yee of our staff will give you a brief overview of the project. Jason? Yeah, thanks, John. Good morning, everyone. 
Uh, this project is to consider the exchange of properties between CDFW and GDCI. For the map, the exchange properties are located in Proctor Valley, which is one mile northeast of the city of Chula Vista and one mile southwest of the community of Humo in San Diego County. The exchange properties are adjacent to, nearby, are part of the 5,600-acre CDFW Rancho Humo Ecological Reserve. The reserve is an important com component of the San Diego County Multi-Species Conservation Program subarea plan. The reserve is bounded by numerous public ownerships that connect to provide a large core area, area of conserved lands, including the Bureau of Land Management Ote Mountain Wilderness Area, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, San Diego Sweetwater National Wildlife Refuge, and CDFW's Hollenbeck Canyon Wildlife Area. Next slide, please. This proposed land exchange agreement is consistent with and is a result of a dispute resolution agreement entered into by CDFW, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, San Diego County, and GDCI. These parties entered into this agreement to resolve differences associated with the pro proposed development of GDCI-owned lands in Proctor Valley under the MSCP subarea plan. The parties have agreed to an alternative land development plan that requires this proposed land exchange, along with the amendment to the MSCP subarea plan. The identified CDFW properties for exchange to GDCI involve 219 acres that are part of the Rancho Mole Ecological Reserve originally purchased in 2003 with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Section 6 funds, along with WCB matching funds. These properties are now being subjected to this proposed exchange for 339 acres owned by GDCI. In addition, CDFW will also receive a 191-acre conservation easement to promote the security of a large east-west connectivity corridor to benefit the reserve. Um, on this map, um, displays the current reserve design highlighted in green along with the proposed exchange parcels. Uh, the blue highlighted parcels will be exchanged to CDFW and the purple highlighted parcels will be exchanged to GDCI. Next slide, please. The properties exchanged to CDFW will become part of the reserve, providing a net increase of 120 acres plus an additional 191 acres protected under the conservation easement. The result of the exchange for CDFW is a fully viable east-west regional wildlife corridor between other tracts of conserved lands and also a superior preserve design that creates a broader east-west tract of connectivity land along with the improvement of the protection of the north-south corridor. The conti contiguous connectivity created provides CDFW with a more uniform reserve area to manage and benefit the federally endangered Keno checker spot butterfly along with the federally threatened coastal California gnat catcher Western Spayfoot Toad. Uh, on this map, the results of the exchange um, with the broader east-west connectivity corridor along with the improvement of the north-south corridor. Next slide, please. If this exchange does not materialize, San Diego County has approved a current land plan that GDCI could implement. The plan would allow for the development of 468 dwelling units with supporting amenities. Implementation of the plan would purpose fragment potential habitat connectivity with severe development edge effects on the outlying areas of the current reserve design. The exchange would avoid this permanent fragmentation by allowing for development of the CDFW lands exchange to GDCI, creating a more compact development footprint and significantly reducing the linear edge effects between development and sensitive habitat of the original plan. If the exchange does not occur, GDCI plans to implement the current plan, which will result in 130 acres of CDFW reserve land becoming surrounded on three sides by new housing development, along with a four-lane road on the fourth side. Uh, the biological integrity of the current reserve design, including sensitive habitat and corridors, would also be expected to greatly decline over time. Um, on this map, um, displays the current approved de development plan on the left, which uh, severely fragments the wildlife area, while the right map displays a post-exchange development plan with a compact development footprint. Next slide, please. On November 17, 2020, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service provided their approval to CDFW for the exchange to be finalized. The approval was necessary pursuant to federal reg regulations that requires approval by the service to exchange lands required with Section 6 funding. The service's approval did not consider the 191-acre conservation easement as part of it, its approval process, as it was negotiated as part of the exchange by CDFW to ensure compatible land use adjacent to CDFW lands and to ensure CDFW receives lands of greater biological value as wildlife habitat than what it is disposing of. Next slide, please. 
CDFW will manage the acquired properties from GDCI in accordance with the existing reserve management plan. This proposed exchange is supported by a land conversion evaluation prepared by CDFW, which concludes that the proposed exchange is biologically superior to that which would result from the implementation of the current land plan. Next slide, please. The GDCI properties were appraised as having a fair market value of $56,485,000. The CDF, D, CDFW properties were appraised as having a fair market value of $31 million. Next slide, please. For the terms of the exchange agreement, no compensation will be exchanged between CDFW or GDCI for the difference in value. The appraisals covering all properties have been reviewed and approved by the Department of General Services and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Next slide, please. Uh, staff recommends approval of this project as proposed. In the audience representing GDCI are Jim Jackson, Liz Jackson, Rob Cameron, and Dave Hubbard. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to respond. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Okay, at this time, uh, I would like to ask if there's any board member and Chuck if he wants to make some comments about the project and then we can answer any other board member comments for the information that Jason uh, <laughs> Just talked about, and then we will go into a more in depth uh, presentation with our uh, staff attorney, Colin Mills. Chuck? Hey, John, I would like to say a few things. Um, so, I, I think it's okay for me to have my video on in the spirit of people kind of being able to see the speaker. And for those on the call that I haven't met, uh, my name is Chuck Bonham. I'm the director of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And so we're, we're here at this agenda item three again. It has been discussed in front of the board before at a prior meeting about two months ago. And I just have a couple of thoughts I want to share with my board members, but begin by talking to the talking with the 166 attendees. And so I think John started in the right place. We're in the middle of a fight against a global pandemic. I can speak for myself and say that I feel very frazzled and exhausted dealing with it. young children at home and the risks it creates. And the data really does suggest a grim period for California if you're paying attention. So I, I sincerely hope each of you is staying safe, stays home as much as you can, wears the masks. We can, we can beat this pandemic. And the other thing I'd ask the 167 folks engaging is this is how public engagement is supposed to happen. This is a space in which we can express our views. I would ask each of you to come with some patience and tolerance for the other. There is likely going to be difference of opinion amongst us as we debate the topic. And it will be potentially exacerbated by the technology platform. We're going to probably have people saying, can you hear me? Can you hear me uh, a lot? <laughs> we may have kids in the background. We may have dogs in the background. Just exercise patience with each other as people and allow the space for the expression of positions. So from there, I would just want to say to my fellow board members, I, I feel very much in the middle of a long running dispute. And I realize that it's likely no one will be satisfied with the department's engagement to date. Um, I also know you as board members may feel very much in the middle of this dispute. T tomorrow I have a Fish and Game Commission meeting and I'm likely to recommend things that will engender a lot of criticism like regulating commercial fishing and recreational fishing to protect whales. So. I, I struggle in these moments, and I think what's most important is to be as open and transparent and objective in all directions as I can. So I think I would want to restate for the board members my view of what has transpired to date. So the fact of the matter is this is a very old development project. It's been around for a long time. There has been a significant dispute or controversy about it. It predates, you know, many of us. It may post-date post -date most of us. 
And there's a moment in time in 2018 and early 19 where our department had a very serious conflict with San Diego County. And we were on the brink of imminent litigation because of the significance of the dispute. So our department has a role here, which is different than you as WCB members. We are a regulator. We actually have a permit for the county, as you know, for their multi-species conservation plan. And at that moment in time, almost two years ago, you know, we were at the brink of considering revocation and it was very unprecedented. So in a very practical and I think rational way, as a regulator, we ended up in a discussion to resolve the dispute to see if we could with the County of San Diego and the US Fish and Wildlife Service and the applicant, the proponent of the project. And we saw a negotiation to resolve a dispute that existed in this regulatory space. And we came up with a dispute resolution agreement. That's about maybe 18 months ago now, a year and a half ago. And we were, we were very open about doing it. I spoke to some leaders in the conservation environmental community, and we published that dispute resolution agreement and it was effectively an agreement between those parties about subsequent process. Now, it was challenged legally. Colin is going to talk about that in a minute. But in September of this year, the San Diego Superior Court said to the litigants, and we were a defendant, that the course of action that the department could submitted itself to is to propose to transfer or exchange land and to prepare the justification. Following the code, following the rules, following the constitution. And the court said the department does not commit to an actual land exchange. And the court acknowledged everyone agrees the land exchange must be subsequently approved by the Wildlife Conservation Board. And as you all know, as board members, you are kind of the real estate agent for the department. So there's two things going on here. And I'm explaining to you our rationale as the regulator. We entered into this dispute resolution agreement. It was challenged in court. I just mentioned what the court found in September of this year. But I am of the belief everything else we've done has been to follow the process all of which has involved public engagement, public comment on the proposals and public meetings like this. So we prepared a land conversion evaluation and that conversion evaluation by our department played it straight, played it by the book. If we had tried to hide anything, that department scientific evaluation wouldn't have acknowledged many things the environmental community will probably raise today. So the conversion evaluation report says we realize the parcels that could be exchanged are of high quality and are important for Kino checker spot butterfly. The evaluation report confirms their presence. It does additional things which we think were very transparent and objective, acknowledging the quality of the lands that are potentially for exchange. But at the end, we made a conclusion. I think it's a rational conclusion. Yes, the parcel that could be exchanged is of high quality, but on balance, we also looked at a reconfiguration of the proposed housing project a consolidation of it, and overall made the informed judgment the benefits to the overall regional landscape, the overall habitat connectivity corridors, and the overall preserve produced the benefit that outweighed the issue around the quality of the actual parcels. 
we've been transparent all along about that. We've said it to everybody. So <clears throat> I'm acutely aware of being put in the middle of this. I know you are thinking about that too as board members. I have said before, I do not believe as chair I have an actual conflict. I discussed what the department did as a regulator. I happen to also be on the board. But I'm aware of these dual roles. And I'm also aware of a perceived conflict that someone have some have alleged. So with a commitment to kind of transparency and the independence and integrity of the process, I have stepped back from participating as a board, a board member. But I'm convinced as a department director with our regulator hat, the dispute agreement and this proposed exchange is prudent and it's better than the alternative. There's one fundamental assumption that is going to be debated today. Our analysis in the dispute resolution agreement and the land conservation evaluation notes, acknowledges, believes in the absence of the exchange, the developer will build the larger, more dispersed, more impactful project. There are others who are my friends and colleagues in the conservation community, and they have a different assumption that if there's no land exchange, there will be no development project. I think there's a difference of opinion. We've been open and transparent about that. Here are the reasons why the department supports the dispute resolution agreement and the exchange. It improves the multi-species plan preserve design. It forces the concentration of the development into the center of Village 14, and it eliminates all that other development scattered across the regional conservation landscape. It also enhances the preserved design by designating lands in all those areas you saw on the map, the planning area 16, Pocta Valley 1 and 3, it permanently resolves a long running dispute and puts those areas into what's called hardline preserve for conservation. Third, the land exchange, the dispute resolution agreement, this was an intense discussion, really forces the development footprint to and results in a preserve benefit of 531.2 acres resulting in a net increase after the land exchange of 311.6 acres into the preserve conservation. Doing so better connects the large contiguous blocks of the preserve lands with adjacent department lands, with adjacent Fish and Wildlife Service lands, with adjacent Bureau of Land Management lands. So we've acknowledged the value of the exchange parcels as the Kino Butterfly, but we've also been open about the overall improvement of the preserve design. The exchange and the dispute resolution eliminates 18 acres of impacts associated with that bigger proposed project. It works out on a valuation front such that the state is $20 million ahead in the exchange. If the bigger project is built, the department will own property surrounded on all four sides and 130 acres will be stuck as a donut hole, and the exchange reduces 13 miles of edge effects. I've thought a lot about precedent here. I realize that's an argument that's going to come up a lot today. Precedent means a principle or a rule that is binding or persuasive when you decide subsequent cases on similar issues or facts. I believe in you as board members. I think this project, this dispute, has such unusual facts and circumstances, a 20-year running fight, that there is very unlikely to be any similar issues or facts that arise in the future, anything like this. So I trust you today and in the future to make the right decision. 
The department supports the dispute resolution agreement. We support the land exchange, but I have said publicly multiple times. We have always said this is an independent decision for the board. I am not going to mix my dual roles. I think it's up to each board member to vote as you see fit. And now I would just encourage, we hear from Colin, board members have that debate amongst themselves. We give space for the public and the public treat each other respectfully as they engage with a difference of opinions. So John, I really appreciate the space. I think the exchange is prudent. It was done at a difficult time when the department faced imminent litigation, and now it's time for the board to debate it in public. Great, thank you, Chuck. All right, at this time, I'd like to ask Colin uh, to present the information that he has, and it's really to, uh, to discuss all of the concerns and questions raised uh, that came up in the August meeting. So Colin. Thank you, John. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Mr. Chair, this is Supervisor Jim Desmond from San Diego. We have a board meeting at nine o'clock in the Supervisor Cox and myself are both on the line. We'd like to make comments if we could, because otherwise we have to start off here at by nine o'clock. Okay, yeah, please go go forward. And uh, remember two minutes, please. Thank you very much. And I apologize to the group and I thank the Wildlife Conservation Board members. And, you know, I'm the vice chairman of the County Board of Supervisors and I'm calling in support of, this, of the Hamul Reserve Land Exchange. Uh, this, as you heard from uh, Chair Bonham, you know, the, the uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, the United States Fish and Wildlife Services are, all, are both recommending approval. The only remaining action to be taken is the approval of the land exchange by this esteemed board. The project not only complies with the county's general plan and zoning, but it also conforms to the South County MSCP and it strengthens the environmental corridors while avoiding impacts to sensitive habitat. And as you heard from Chairman Bonham, the alternative project, if this land swap isn't allowed, uh, is gonna be much more impactful to the sensitive species and habitat. And this, uh, and this is the environmentally superior alternative with the land exchange. So I wanna thank you very much for allowing me to jump in. I respectfully request this, we, this board approve the land change and you give uh, our, my chairman uh, Supervisor Greg Cox, um, the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Chairman Donnelly, if it's okay, this is uh, Greg Cox. Is it all right to speak at this time? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Hi, I'm Greg Cox, Chairman of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. You're going to hear from the opposition today that the land exchange is not consistent with the county's MSCP. But all three parties to the MSCP who are actually responsible for making that MSCP consistency determination, that is the County of San Diego, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and US Fish and Wildlife Service are telling you that the project is MSCP consistent. This after extensive review and analysis. Now the opposition is telling you that the 219 acres being exchanged by the state are the quote, the gem of the MSC preserve and should not be given up. But those 219 acres are not even in the MSCP, nor now, nor have they ever been in the MSCP preserve. They are approved for development, not preserved. The county's general plan and our MSCPs, if they were important enough to be called the gem of the preserve, then surely they would have been actually included in that preserve. To this day, they are not, they are still approved for development. The land exchange is, tremendous, is a tremendous story of public-private partnership and of collaboration between the property owner and the local, state, and federal governments. It would be a shame to see that unique collaboration collapse with the rejection of this land exchange. And more importantly, if the land exchange is denied, why would any property owner or jurisdiction for that matter even pursue regional conservation planning or trust the conflict resolution process of the MSCP if at the end of the day, the MSC, an MSCP consistent project like this is denied after two years and literally millions of dollars of processing by the property owner who pursued a collaborative resolution. I went back to the actual MSCP deal points that our Board of Supervisors approved back in October 1995 when we were considering the MSCP. 
I noticed that the highest priority goal was certainty and assurance. A deal was supposed to be a deal. The opposition to this land exchange includes respected organizations that supported the MSCP and agreed to that framework. And yet now, when it serves their agenda, they are opposing a project that is consistent with the MSCP and is entitled to the assurances and certainty the program was supposed to confer. It is disingenuous of these groups and threatens the continuing viability of the MSCP. A deal is a deal. You can't pick and choose which portions of the MSCP you're going to honor. The pro otherwise, the program will collapse. I, I know this is a 50-year plan. The MSCP, the County of San Diego is very proud that of the $100,000 we're supposed to acquire for the MSCP to work, 80,000 acres has already been put okay, in the please MSCP. Please start wrapping up your comments, Mr. Supervisor. Okay, maybe yeah. just one final comment, and that is the opposition is asking you to deny the land exchange so that they can be sent back to the Board of Supervisors consideration. As Mr. Bonham had pointed out, this is not what will happen. The board approved the project in 2019 without the land exchange. And if the land exchange is now denied, the 200, 2019 project will move forward without, unfortunately, many of the benefits provided by the land exchange. It will not be reconsidered by the board. Thank you for your consideration this morning. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Colin, uh, please continue. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, Members of the board, my name is Colin Mills. I am the legal counsel for the board. And I wanted to address, I think, a few points that have been raised through communications and questions that the board had for WCB staff at the last meeting. And Celeste, if you could move on to the next slide, please. Um, Jason did a good job of describing the project uh, generally. So it results in 120 the acre increase to the department along with a 191 acre conservation easement. And I think uh, Director Bonham, you know, took a lot of my presentation and just did it on his own. So hopefully I can move quickly through this. But um, if we move on to the next slide, Celeste, um, I, I think two, two things I want to address very broadly to start is a lot of the communications that the board has received uh, make a lot of references to the status of PV 1, 2, and 3. Are they preserved? Are they no-take authorized? Can they be developed? Can they not be developed? I think as Director Bonham pointed out, this is the underlying dispute that the parties had beginning in 2018 that ultimately led to the county, the service, the department, and the developer entering into the dispute resolution agreement to move forward with an MSCP amendment in this exchange if it's approved. So for purposes of what we're considering here today, if this exchange moves forward consistent with the DRA, all of those disputes will be resolved. And that's not an issue um, in front of our board with respect to moving forward and implementing the MSCP as amended. Um, another theme that has permeated a lot of the communications that the board has received is that somehow what WCB is doing here today is illegal. I'm here to tell you that is not true. WCB staff, including myself, have gone over all the relevant documents, state processes result, um, that are required um, for WCB to follow, and we have fully complied with those laws. And I will explain that in a little more detail as, we, as I move along in my presentation. So as Director Bonham appropriately pointed out, WCB has the legal authority to conduct land exchanges on behalf of the department. And in this capacity, we really act as the department's real estate arm. Next slide, please, Celeste. It's been suggested that um, you know maybe exchanges are unique and it's not something that WCB does. And although it's not something that we do at every board meeting, there is a history of exchanges by WCB on behalf of the department. Um, in our research, we've conducted a little over 20 in the history of WCB. And a lot of those exchanges have been minor. They're to resolve boundary disputes with neighboring landowners, to resolve encroachment issues, 
issues, allowed for roadway realignments and things like that. And the ability to conduct exchanges is beneficial for the department. Just like any landowner, uh, there are disputes that arise between neighbors. There are governmental entities that have eminent domain authority that will try to condemn for various purposes. And having the ability to do an exchange and come to the table to resolve is beneficial because it gives the department bargaining power to be able to negotiate for a better conservation outcome, which I think is really what uh, Director Bonham and the department tried to do here. Next slide, please. All exchanges um, are com um, supported by a land conversion evaluation, which obviously is, is a theme um, throughout a lot of the communications and what exactly the land conversion evaluation that the department prepared said. So we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. And there, you know, there's been a suggestion that whenever the department does exchange it is that they have to or are required to um, have a restriction on that land that they are exchanging out of state ownership. While some exchanges that we have done certainly have required restrictions for you know, whatever reasons that the department has determined, that is not a hard and fast rule. There have been a number of exchanges that the department has done that WCB has approved in the past that do not require any restrictions on the land that the state conveyed away. Next slide, please. So one of the main questions that the board had at the last meeting was in relation to whether the Fish and Wildlife Service, through its Section 6 funding process, had approved the exchange of properties. And in August, that had not occurred. The service, I, I'm happy to say, did approve the exchange of the fee parcels in on November 18th. And I, I want to make a very fine point here because it's important as we move forward. The services section six disposal approval relates specifically to the exchange of the fee parcel components of this transaction. It did not relate in any way to the conservation easement. And what the services findings with relation to the exchange of the fee parcel solely was that they determined that there was biological equivalency between the two fee parcels being exchanged. And that will become very important. And it's a point that I'll reiterate as we get into the board's compliance with the public resources code in a few minutes here. Um, next slide, please. So I think uh, Director Bonham did a very good job of, of explaining the MSCP and its relationship to the department's statutory authority. So if we could move on to uh, the next slide, Celeste, please. One thing I would say with relation to NCCPs, which the MSCP is, is a, a blend between the state NCCP and federal conservation plans, is that the board's historic role with relation to NCCPs in the department has been to support implementation and acquisition of conservation lands for those plans. And to this end, we have a number of funding sources through various bond measures that has provided WCB with money to support the department's implementation of those NCCPs. Next slide, please. Um, another thing I, I think is important is to, to make clear is that this is the third amendment to the county sub area plan of the MSCP. Um, so amendments in and of themselves in the MSCP context are also not unusual. The MSCP allows for amendments. To my knowledge, the parties went through the appropriate men, amendment process to get to this point now um, to where we're considering this exchange. So, Again, you know, at the last meeting, I felt like there was some confusion about what exactly the board was being asked to do. And I wanna make it very clear that the board is not being asked to approve the MSCP sub area plan amendment. 
The entities that have that authority are the county, which approved in June of 2020, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, which approved that in August of 2020, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which has in principle approved the exchange. There is a, I'm sorry, the, the amendment to the MSCP. There's a nuance that I want to make clear with relation to the service's approval. The service has made a final approval for the exchange of the properties under section six. With respect to the services approval for the MSCP amendment, that approval will not become final unless the board today approves the exchange and subsequent to such approval, the service would then issue, issue its final permit for the MSCP sub area plan amendment. So all the board is being asked to do today is to approve the exchange of the properties which is consistent with our general you know, role in assisting the department in implementing NCCP. Because what the exchange does today is it implements the MSCP sub area plan as amended by all the signatories to that plan. Next slide, please. So I think the main implication of not approving the exchange today, and I would go back to one of the things that Director Bonham mentioned earlier, is that this takes us back to the county's original approval of the GDCI plan in 2019, which is the more dispersed development, which we'll show you some maps. I, I think Jason already showed you some, but we may bring one up here in a minute. Um, and I think it also puts the department back in the difficult position that Director Bonham mentioned earlier about having to determine whether they need to revoke the permit with relation to the MSCP. So it sort of unwinds everything and in my mind puts the department back in that original position of having to determine what steps it needs to take next. However, again, if we approve the exchange today, I think that's consistent with our typical role in supporting the department's NCCPs, MSCPs. Next slide, please. Most of the communications will oftentimes that there are in opposition to this project that the board has received will state that this project is illegal, citing to public resources code, code 5096.516 which requires that state exchanges of conservation lands need to be for lands of greater biological value for wildlife habitat. Now, I, I want to make it clear that the statute does not dictate how such an analysis must occur. And Celeste, if we could move forward to slide 12. I think it's very important to point out right at the outset, which Chuck did himself, is that CDFW in its LCE acknowledged that the CDFW exchange lands currently possess higher biological value in terms of habit, habitat and sensitive species. Now, a lot of the opposition that we've received will say period, end of sentence, end of story, you have not complied with the PRC. I disagree with that. Uh, if we could move back to slide 11, Celeste, and, and sorry to, that we're skipping around here. I think it's important to understand that biological evaluations are not as easy as just comparing apples to apples. The department's biological staff has to evaluate the differing habitat conditions and types, species composition, connectivity, management considerations, and then at that point, with a very holistic big picture view, make a determination about whether it's complying with the public resources code and doing an exchange for lands of greater biological value as habitat. And that's precisely what the department did here. And if we could move forward again to slide 12, Celeste, the department did that analysis. And it was, it was very clear um, in assigning a greater biological value to the lands that the department currently owns. But that wasn't the end of the analysis. Um, the department also took it, uh, placed a lot of emphasis on reducing edge effects by consolidating the development, as Chuck mentioned earlier. And 
It also appropriately identified that if the 2019 county approved plan did occur, it would have a significant adverse impact on the regional MSCP preserve design. Next slide, please, Celeste. Uh, Jason mentioned about how some of, in the absence of the exchange, how some of the department lands would become surrounded, thus leading to a degradation of that habitat over time. So I think it is important, and it it, seem, it would be illogical to not consider the impacts that would occur in the absence of the exchange. Otherwise, the department would be left just having to hold property with diminishing habitat value over time, which does not make sense. And the department reconfirmed its findings on two subsequent occasions in July, as well as in August, with letters that it sent to the board. And its August 2020 letter concluded that on balance, the, de the department determined that the benefits from the land exchange by providing a net increase in conservation lands, reducing fragmentation, and maintaining connectivity outweighed the loss of certain lands with superior habitat values. And I think that's a very important sentence to reread for everyone considering this project, because that's what we're talking about, of taking a, a big picture view of the exchange and not narrowing, narrowing in on one focus and one sentence within the LCE, because the department has to look at all of the relevant um, factors associated with the exchange. For example, in my conversations with, with regional staff, it's very clear that the consolidated development footprint maintains connectivity corridors that would otherwise be lost if the original plan is implemented. And it's entirely appropriate for biological staff to take those things into consideration in making its ultimate determination with respect to if the state is receiving lands of greater biological value as habitat. Um, next slide, please. And this is where I want to rewind to something that I, I said previously, is that if you look at the services approval of the Section 6 exchange, solely in their analysis, they look only at the two fee parcels and say that those fee parcels are biologically equivalent. They're equal to one another. But then the department on top of those fee parcels is also receiving 191 acre conservation easement. And that easily gets you above that equal one for one. So the services section six analysis supports the department's ultimate, ultimate conclusion that we're receiving greater biological value as habitat as part of the exchange. And I also, I know that we have a lot of time and things to get through today. I want to make a fine point with relation to the conservation easement to the extent that there are questions about it. I want to make it clear that the conservation easement is not counting as mitigation. Consistent with the, the DRA, and I believe it's section 3.1.1, GDCI as the underlying fee owner did retain certain rights to do management, enhancement, and restoration activities on that fee parcel and receive mitigation credits for it. However, the conservation at a baseline level uh, does not count and cannot count for mitigation. And this is completely consistent with WCB conservation easement grants that we give to nonprofit organizations around the state whereby we allow restoration and enhancement activities paid for by the landowner or third parties that increase habitat. We make that eligible for mitigation because the state did not pay for that, conser that conservation. That same principle applies to the conservation easement here. Again, the conservation easement itself does not count as mitigation in any way. Next slide, please, Celeste. So just to update you on the litigation, as Chuck said, the, there was litigation against the department. 
with respect to its entering into the DRA. The trial court did decide in favor of the department. That litigation is now on appeal. Um, notwithstanding that, the, the, depart, the trial court did rule in the department's favor. Um, and again, the section six approval for the exchange finalized, and we have that approval from the service. And if this exchange is approved today, the service will then move forward on issuing the permit for the MSCP sub area plan amendment. Next slide, please, Celeste. So in conclusion, the board recommends approval of the exchange consistent with the staff's recommend recommendation. I want to reiterate that this exchange is legal. We have complied with the law. It is my position, it is my role at the department to ensure that we comply with all laws, and we have. And I've reiterated that fact in two memos to the board, which I provided in August, um, which you are free to, to reference back to if you have the time. The exchange is consistent with our statutory authority to conduct those exchanges. It's consistent with the funding sources to help the department implement NCCPs. And we believe that this is a, a better biological outcome than the alternative, and we would recommend approval of this. Um, and next slide, Celeste. So if there's any questions for the board at this time for me or WCB staff, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Great, thank you, Colin. Uh, before we get into questions from board members, I'd just like to briefly highlight and for the record letters of support and opposition that we received, they're not long. And remember, those letters received prior to the August 26th meeting still remain on record, so I will not be reading those. But for letters of support, we have a letter from Congressman Juan Vargas, State Senator Ben Hueso, State Assembly Member Randy Vopel, San Diego County Supervisors Greg Cox and Jim Desmond, Chula Vista Council Member John McCann, Robert Alcanader, Board Member Southwestern Community College District, Cal Fire Fighters Union Local 2881. And then we also received 33 additional emails and correspondence through emails and short form letters from local businesses, groups, and residents. The letters of the op on opposition that we received. We received a letter of opposition from San Diego County Supervisor Tara Lawson Raymer, Mr. Michael Mantell, Resources Legacy Fund. We received one from San Diego County Wildlife Federation, Natural Resources Defense Council, the Wildlands Conservancy, Pasadena Audubon Society, Arroyos and Foothill Conservancy. And then we received 97 emails and or form letters from local businesses, groups and residents. So with that, I would welcome and Colin and staff welcomes any uh, comments at this time uh, from board members and or questions uh, before we get into public comment. Chuck, this is Diane. Can I ask a quick question? Please, Diane. OK, yeah, um, I just I had one question for Colin. I have some other comments that I'd like to reserve till after we've heard the um, public testimony and I might have other questions that come up, but my my question right now, and it goes back to slide nine that you had where you were saying that if the exchange is not approved, then GDCI's uh, current land plan is fully entitled by the county to go forward. And I just want to ask for a clarification on that. I think I understood you correctly that because the county is not the only authority here in question, right? I mean, if if the land exchange is not approved and they go back to the current land plan, um, there would have to be an MSCP amendment approved. Uh, perhaps additional take authority would have to be granted and that would put the Department of Fish and Wildlife back in that, that position, um, which is, you know, part of their job responsibility, right? So, I mean, I think, and, and as you also noted, there has been some, uh, sequel litigation initiated against that original plan or the EIR of the county. So um, I just didn't want that that slide, that statement to be misconstrued that it, that nothing else needs to happen for that current land plan to go forward other than the county's approval. Well, yeah, I mean, it. so it's my understanding that really the the 
the plan is fully permitted except with respect to and the the take and everything is consistent with the MSCP save for I think that the issues that surround PV one two and three which was the the genesis of the dispute that that led to the DRA now to the extent that there are Kino there um, and Kino was not covered by the MSCP Kino is not currently a state listed species. I know that there's a petition for it in front of the commission, which I'm sure member Sklar is aware of and, and Chuck knows a bit more about. Um, so there may be some take permits with respect to having to move forward with that development. Um, and and I, would, I would have GDCI when it's their turn to speak, speak to that more detail. But the bulk of their development as I understand it, is completely consistent with the MSCP, has the county approvals, and can move forward, save for those small areas that are really the, the dispute that that started th this whole process. Okay, thank you. I'd hey, like, be interested in other people's further um, comments on that as we hear from that, because it seems to me that a lot of this, the department's decision, um, is based on the assumption that without this land exchange, the current land plan is a fait accompli and goes forward. And I think that that, to me, is still not entirely clear because, it, and I don't think it was necessarily clear to the proponents, to the developers either, or else they wouldn't have approached the department initially to enter into the dispute resolution process if they thought it was just clear sailing to go forward with the current land plan. So, um, because it kind hey, of Diane, seems this, like we're stuck in this, you know, either or thing. So, Diana, I, I was, I've made a particular personal point of highlighting the difference of opinion on that fundamental assumption. Okay. And I think yeah. we'll hear a lot about it in the public testimony. Yeah. Okay. To the extent you're asking, I I do believe there's outstanding litigation against the project for a whole variety of reasons that don't have anything to do with the department's jurisdiction. So. But I encourage the public to express their view on that fundamental assumption. Great, thank you. Great, thank you, uh, Ann, Chuck, Cohen. So is there any more board member comments or questions at this time? All right, hearing none, uh, we'll go into public uh, testimony at this time. So as a reminder, you all will notice that there's a timer up on the screen and I'm gonna be limiting folks to two minutes. So please, please try to stay within that two limit time frame. Uh, I really don't wanna have to cut you off. Uh, I see the timer's ready. Uh, I will be calling names, not in any, any particular order. So please listen and be ready to, to come online uh, when you're called. And I'll be uh, reading three names in advance, uh, plus the current speaker. So to start with, uh, Mr. John McCann, council member, uh, followed by Brian Albright, Patrick McDonough, and Frank Landis. So. John McCann, are you on? Uh, John, uh, Councilman McCann submitted a letter of support for the exchange that's in the record, but he was called away this morning and won't be available to testify. All right, thank you. Brian, all right. Thank you, John. Uh, good morning and thank you members of the Wildlife Conservation Board. My name is Brian Albright and I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation for the County of San Diego. My department manages 53,000 acres of open space throughout the county the vast majority of which is part of the Multiple Species Conservation Program, and we continue to make efforts to expand that regional preserve. I'd like to acknowledge, uh, first off, this is a very challenging situation. We work with many of the agencies and the non-governmental organizations that are interested stakeholders uh, in this proposed land exchange. We've collaborated with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the developers for this part of the county. With this land exchange, the development footprint will be more consolidated and ultimately more land will be conserved. 
It will preserve land that was proposed for development that's directly adjacent to Otay Ranch Preserve, and it could improve conditions for some protected species by increasing connectivity for wildlife movement. The land swap is not approved. It would revert back to the previous development proposal, which would increase edge effects on the preserve and potentially introduce more threats to the habitat and wildlife. It would also segregate preserved lands and therefore increase some of the management challenges. For these reasons, we believe the land exchange is the most beneficial outcome for the regional preserve. Thank you. All right, it appears we lost Brian. Thank you. So, Patrick McDonoghue. Yes, good morning. Um, my name is Patrick McDonough. Don't worry, it's mispronounced all the time. Um, I'm a staff attorney with San Diego Coast Keeper. Uh, Coast Keeper is a grassroots nonprofit dedicated to protecting and restoring our region's waters. And we do so by taking a holistic watershed based approach that is guided by informed communities and protective of a healthy environment that supports high biodiversity, resilient ecosystems, and thriving neighborhoods. So, while we're Coast Keeper in name, our work really encompasses all of our inland water bodies, lake streams, and canyons, um, and other land use decisions, really any policy that affects the region as a whole, not just the coast, because everything is interconnected. Um, and decisions like the one you'll be making today can have a butterfly effect, which would influence the health of our ecosystems, waterways, and neighborhoods throughout the region and the state. Uh, coast Keeper, as well as many other organizations and regulated entities, um, rely upon logical and consistent enforcement of federal, state, and local regulation. And for a number of reasons, raised in written comments submitted and that I'm sure will be further discussed today, um, uh, the incident proposal we believe is illegal. And if agencies ignore their own departmental guidelines and uh, contrive to work around governing statutes, the entire of the entire fabric of environmental regulation would unravel. So this exchange, so, so, so should this exchange be approved, the regulations which were adopted specifically to uh, protect endangered species habitats, precisely like the parcels that are currently at issue, would be turned on their heads in an unlawful attempt to, to justify this politically expedient decision. Um, and it's not just the habitats in this matter, acceptance of this exchange would not only create an unacceptable precedent, but it would also undermine the state of California's as well as this very agency's credibility um, and integrity with regard to protecting sensitive habitats and species. And as such, we ask you to reject, reject this exchange. Thank you. Great, thank you, Patrick. Okay, next up is Frank Landis, followed by Kim Delfino, Bill White, and Randall Chablon. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, good morning, honorable members of the board. My name is Frank Landis, and I'm the conservation chair for the San Diego chapter of the California Native Plant Society, and I speak for all of CNPS on this matter. My background is that I have a PhD and a master's in botany specializing in vegetation and plant ecology with experience as a consultant and in nonprofits. I've lived in San Diego for the last decade, and I know the plants and vegetation quite well. I'm here to ask you to join with your longtime allies and vote against the Rancho de Homo land exchange. Please note that the con conclusion of the staff report was preordained. They became contractually obligated to support the exchange by signing the dispute resolution agreement. The DRA was signed before the staff did their own environmental analysis, and staff had no choice but to issue findings to support the exchange, because if they did not do so, the agencies would be sued for breach of contract. This is unacceptable. The developer's EIR was the basis for staff analysis. At least 198 acres were grossly mismapped in those documents. Mr. Hamilton will speak to this, but I found it easy to verify his findings simply by driving through the area on the one public road. It was obvious to me as an ecologist that the vegetation I saw was not what was reported in the EIRs. The lands the department would receive are, great, are heavily thatched grassland. There's no bare ground and the soils differ greatly enough that the, with the exchange lands that the exchange lands cannot now nor ever realistically support the endangered Kino butterfly or sensitive native plants. That is why the department admits they are of lower biological value for endangered and sensitive species. To trade away public lands on the basis of false information would be unconscionable. We will never protect California's natural resources from climate change and other threats if we tolerate the corruption of science by outcomes based on political expediency. It is time to 
proposal. As I'm sure you know, CNPS as an organization has worked for decades with the board and the department on many important projects. Nevertheless, by unanimous vote of the State Board of Directors and many other members of CNPS, we, we oppose this project. Please join us and do the same. We can find a better solution together. Thank you for taking my testimony and please stay safe. Great, thank you. Kim Delfino. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, good morning. My name is Kim Delfino uh, with Earth Advocacy. Um, I've been involved in NCCPs and HCPs for more than 20 years. I'm going to give you two reasons for rejecting this land exchange. You'll hear a lot more from the other commenters. The first is that this will undercut the NCCP program. As noted already, the cornerstone of an NCCP is that a deal is a deal. Certainty for developers, but also certainty for conservation. However, here, the developers in the county have decided that they did not like the original deal. And so they moved forward with a project that violated the terms of the MSCP and then dared the department to do something about it. After writing a letter threatening to reverse the permit, the department backed down and agreed to a settlement of which these land, this land exchange is a linchpin. Approving this project would reward this blatant noncompliance and set a dangerous precedent. Jurisdictions must play fair and not bring noncompliant projects to hearing and then put pressure on the department. And despite what Director Bonham says, other jurisdictions will be watching this. If the board approves this exchange, we're handing over a blueprint to jurisdictions to undercut the rules of these conservation plans. The second reason is that exchange, this exchange quite literally does not add up. Once it became clear by the department's own admission that the quality of the lands it will be receiving is much lower than what it will be gaining, it turned to a, it's all about quantity, not quality argument. They're saying that giving up 219 acres of the ecological reserve is okay because they're receiving 300 acres of newly conserved land. However, that doesn't hold up. It would hold up if these lands were already at risk, but they are not. 147 acres of these lands are already preserved that CDFW has said itself are protected under the MSCP. And in addition, another 194 acres are the very acres the developer itself is using for project mitigation. When you do the math, this is a net loss in conservation acres. Finally, I would note that while the Fish and Wildlife Service did approve this exchange, it also signed away its discretion similar to the um, department. And uh, they are also double counting. Unlike the state, there are no quantifiable federal standards. And even though the Fish and Wildlife Service and the Fish and Wildlife Service failed to find that the land is no longer useful or needed for original purpose in its regulations. Unlike the Trump administration, your mandate is to apply state statute and department guidelines. And for these reasons and many given already, so, and those who will speak after me, I urge you to vote no on this land exchange. Thank you. Thank you. Bill White. Uh, good morning, board members. I'm Bill White with Shoot Mahali and Weinberger on behalf of the Endangered Habitats League. Um, you've heard that uh, staff uh, thinks that this, in their opinion, this exchange is, is legal. We, I'm not gonna, I don't have time to go over everything that we have in our letters to show that it, this clearly violates statutory requirements, but there is a point I do wanna make. Um, it's important to know that this board always retains the absolute and unfettered discretion to deny a conservation uh, land conversion, which means that the question is not just whether you can legally approve the exchange, but whether you should approve the exchange. And here you've got 50 environmental groups and land trusts, these are your trusted partners telling you that this approval would set a disastrous precedent and undermine their own conservation efforts. You have some of the most respected biologists in the state telling you that this is a terrible deal for wildlife and could inflict irreparable damage on the Kino. You have a blatant violation of department guidelines which never allow the conversion of important habitat occupied by, that is occupied by listed species you have a futile attempt to show greater biological value by double counting lands that are already set aside for conservation, as Ms. Delfino just pointed out. In light of all of this, what reason could the, this board possibly have for exercising its discretion to support this exchange? And we know that the answer is there is none. This exchange, you've heard it described as a compromise uh, in response to the developer's threat to develop lands that are already in MSCP hardline preserve and the county's violation of its permit by approving that development. This is not a compromise. It's based on 100% acceptance of the developers in the county's position on the MSCP. That's not a compromise. It's a capitulation. 
and this board should have no part in it. So please, we urge you to reject this exchange and don't set a disastrous precedent. Great, thank you. Uh, Randall Shablom, followed by Amy Spear, Dave Hubbard, and James Whalen. This is Randall Shoblin with the County of San Diego. I'm just I'm with County Council's office and available for questions if there are any for for the county. Thank you. Great, thank you. Amy Spear. All right, we'll come back to Amy. David Hubbard. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, I'm David Hubbard, legal counsel for GDCI. With all the information you've been given, it's easy to lose track of the narrow questions before you. For example, despite what some people believe, you are not being asked to approve GDCI's project. The county, as a legally designated land use authority, already made that decision last June. Instead, your task is more limited and straightforward. The department has simply asked permission to exchange 219 acres of state land for 531 acres of GDCI's land. The WCB now must decide whether to grant the department. That's it. You have the department's land conversion evaluation, which concluded that the proposed land exchange is biologically superior. You also have the land appraisal approved by DGS showing a net gain to the state of more than $20 million. You have a report from WCB staff also recommending approval of the land exchange. And now you have documentation from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service concurring in the land exchange and concluding that the state will receive habitat at least as valuable as what it is giving up. In fact, the service determined that the land exchange would, one, bring more land into permanent preserve, Two, protect more tier one and tier two habitat. Three, conserve more special status plant species. Four, improve the design effectiveness and preserve. Five, provide for the protection and focus management of kino and fairy shrimp. And six, reduce habitat fragmentation and edge effects. These findings of fact made by the experts at the department, DGS, the service, and WCB should give you the assurances you need to approve the land exchange. We would ask that you follow the recommendation. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Jim Whalen. Good morning and thank you for hearing me. Uh, had this been a less charged environment, approving this land exchange would seem to be an easy call. A fragmented development pattern gets consolidated into a much more compact footprint with a superior outcome versus the alternative. Something about my background. I've been part of the original MSCP effort from its inception to the present day, 23 years later. I was vice chair of the working group, and my job was to bring the business community to the table. How that was by offering certainty. My main point here, a deal is a deal. Otay Ranch Village 14 is a covered project in the MSCP, the second and arguably most successful NCCP plan, with most of the preserve already acquired 25 years early. The board needs to ascertain the truth to make the right decision, and I believe there are two key issues. One, staff integrity. The opponents to the exchange are saying the science isn't valid. Based on what evidence? Staff from local government and the wildlife agencies have literally decades of experience working on Otay Ranch. Whose documentation should you believe? Your own staff or the opponent's hired consultants? And two, what happens if the exchange isn't approved? There is no question here. The archipelago project approved in 2019 will be built, complete with fragmentation and edge effects. Developers don't bluff. They have an approved plan, albeit without the environmental benefits of the land exchange. There would be no sound business reason to return to local government and open up a can of worms. To conclude, to honor the NCCP agreement, if the land exchange is consistent with the MSCP, which it is, the transaction needs to be approved and preserve the faith of the program. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, so Amy Spear, I'll call you again, and then followed by Joe Marie Diamond, Pamela Flick, and Damon Nagami. So Amy Spear. 
I don't. So Joe Marie Di Diamond. Hi, hi everyone. Here I am. Hi, Great. my name is Joe Marie Diamond, and I'm CEO of the East County Economic Development Council. I'm speaking in support of the Rancho Homo Land Exchange. I support this land exchange because we need more co collaboration, less conflict. Certainly, the news tells you that, and this is a better outcome because everyone worked together. And frankly, as an economic developer, I wish every project and that came to my way um, had this level of collaboration. So I'm asking that you're to trust your WCB staff and vote yes today. And thank you for your time. Great, thank you. Pamela Flick. Good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, board members and staff. My name is Pamela Flick, and I'm the California Program Director for Defenders of Wildlife. On behalf of Defenders, more than 279,000 members and supporters who reside in California, I respectfully urge you to deny the proposed land exchange for Rancho Humboldt Ecological Reserve that's before you today. <clears throat> this proposed exchange is unprecedented in Wildlife Conservation Board history due to its controversial nature. Past land exchanges have been mostly small scale and have had compelling biological benefits. An exchange of comparable scale allowed for the construction of a visitor center at Sassoon Marsh, and the department retained a conservation easement over the property, preventing any future development. Another exchange abated a nuisance of water inundation. A feedlot was exchanged for high value marsh. An exchange with Save the Redwoods League resulted in a conservation easement being placed over the landowner's entire 4,000 acre ranch, a huge net gain. Most large scale exchanges were with other state or federal public agencies for management purposes. Never before has the WCB approved a land exchange that gives a vital occupied habitat of a critically endangered species, let alone to be paved over by a high end housing development in the heart of an ecological reserve, blocking indispensable habitat connectivity for many species. Never before has the land exchange converted uh, to be able enable and enrich for profit enterprise. Should this exchange be approved, what other permanently protected lands will be exchanged only to be developed down the line? Should this exchange be approved, the public confidence in this board's decision making will be significantly eroded and trust to do the right thing with public dollars will be lost. Please do the right thing for our lands, our past conservation investments and the pe people of California and reject this land exchange. Thank you. Great, thank you. Jamin Nagami, followed by Laura Hunter and Jerry Ann Stalka. Yes, thank you. Damon Nagami, Senior Attorney with the Natural Resources Defense Council. We urge the board to deny the proposed land exchange. It does not meet state law requirements as the reserve lands continue to serve a needed conservation purpose, and the exchange lands do not have greater biological value than the lands that would be given up. The state's attempted workaround doesn't meet the statute's plain language. The exchange also conflicts with the department's land conversion guidelines. There's no documentation of extirpation, irreversible impacts, or improbability of recolonization for the Kino checker spot butterfly. Rather, reserve lands support an extant population, and the guidelines therefore demand that reserve lands should not be converted. The department admits it didn't have enough time to conduct proper surveys, and instead is relying on a CEQA document that it has criticized as defective. The assertion that edge effects would be reduced and properly relies on an illegal project that the department itself says can't be built. The assertion that connectivity would be improved is mistaken because the department determined that these lands are already protected. For its part, the Fish and Wildlife Service didn't follow its own regulations. It couldn't determine the land is no longer useful or needed for its original purpose. And because the replacement land isn't Kino habitat, it doesn't serve an important purpose of the original grant. And for its justification, the Trump administration reversed the service's original position that the parcels in question were not developable. As Bill White had said previously, this board has absolute discretion to reject this deal on whatever grounds you choose, and there are many grounds to choose from. You are under no obligation to approve this deal, so please act independently, deny the exchange, and allow a new board of supervisors to please reassess the underlying dispute. Thank you. Great, thank you. Laura Hunter. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great, my name is Laura Hunter. I'm the coordinator of the uh, San Diego 
wildlife habitat conservation. And when you listed the letters in opposition uh, to the land exchange, you omitted one that you recently received from 29 land trust organizations um, who have written you and said in part, the proposed conversion of land sends a signal that protected land throughout the state can be traded away for, for private development and strikes at the integrity of public and private support for conservation. Uh, in protection of these lands has never been more important. I think it's very important that you hear the names of all of the land trust organizations that are, are standing opposing this agreement. The Nature Conservancy, Ojai Valley Land Conservancy, Peninsula Open Space Trust, the Land Conservancy of San Luis Obispo County, Natural Resources Trust, Mojave Desert Land Trust, the Escondido Creek Conservancy, California Council of Land Trusts, Sequoia Riverlands Trust, Eastern Sierra Land Trust, Marin Agricultural Land Trust, San Diego River Valley Conservancy, Los Cerritos Wetlands Land Trust, Save the Woodwinds League, Bolsa Chica Land Trust, Big Sur Land Trust, Center for La Natural Lands Management, Semper Vivens Fund, Sierra Foothill Conservancy, Solano Land Trust, Transition Habitat Conservancy, Western Alliance for Nature, Anza Borrego Foundation, Sierra County Land Trust, Sierra Fallbrook Land Conservancy, Wildlife Heritage Foundation, Arroyo and Foothills Conservancy, all urging you to deny this land exchange. Thank you. Great, thank you. Next up is Jerry Ann Stallcup, followed by Trish Boaz, Ken Osborne, and Claire Schlotterbeck. Good morning, my name is Jerry Stalkup. I'm a conservation biologist who spent 30 years working on the MSCP and other NCCP programs throughout the state. I was the principal biologist and primary author of the MSCP plan. And since then, I've been involved in implementation, management, and monitoring of the MSCP plan. I'm appalled and disheartened that the trust of our 30-year partnership has been broken, allowing this project to proceed to this point. The department's preserved lands meet all NCCP priorities, which is why they were purchased in the first place. And in spite of what some are saying, the exchange lands do not meet these priorities. The dispute resolution agreement was signed outside of the MSCP and CEQA processes. The consultants are using the vegetation tiers for the wrong purpose. They were intended as generalized tools for determining mitigation ratios. 30 years of new conservation lands and new scientific information have not been considered since the original MSCP plan design was approved in 1996. And restoration attempts cannot achieve the habitat values that are being destroyed. The land exchange allows massive development in the middle of the largest core conservation area of the entire Southern California NCCP. If you approve this exchange, future development proposals will continue to ignore the MSCP guidelines. The, the two preserve configuration that you have been presented are not the only options. Please recognize the political expediency being pushed here and deny this exchange. Thank you. Great, thank you. Trish Boaz. Trish Boaz. I see your cell phone is lit up. You hit a star six to unmute yourself if you're on the phone. Good morning. I am Trish Bose, Executive Director of the San Diego River Valley Conservancy, which strongly opposes this land exchange. I also was at the negotiating table when the county's HCP and CCP agreement uh, was put into place. Along with other conservancies, SDRVC acquires land that the county counts in its 90,000 acres of MSCP land, which Supervisor Cox mentioned earlier. 
Just last month, your board approved over $2 million of Section 6 and Prop 68 funding for acquisition of 103 acres in a core preserve area. The county neglected and actually refused to participate in the acquisition with us because Section 6 funding was involved. Now we know why. First, we cannot believe that the county ignored repeated letters from the wildlife agencies that asked for MSCP compliance. Your staff is proposing that this board reward this brazen non-compliance with this land swap. Your own attorney said today that in 2019, the county went ahead and approved a development plan that will have a devastating impact on the county's MSCP. Second, this proposed conversion of land sends a signal that protected lands throughout the state can be traded away for private development and therefore strikes at the very integrity of public and private support for conservation. The public must feel confident that its hard-earned tax dollars will be spent as intended so it will support bond acts like Prop 68 that fund these acquisitions for the MSCP. I would hate to see opponents of public spending and bond acts for parkland get a hold of this action, this land swap, if your board approves it and use it against people voting for this. There is no compelling benefit here. Please, we urge you to deny this land swap. Great, thank you. Ken Osborne. Hello, we are. Yes. Okay, it looks like I am on. You are uh, on, I am please Ken. go. Great, I'm Ken Osborne, a leading expert on checker spots with over 50 years of experience. My degrees in entomology and years of ecological field studies on the Kino checker spot led to my publication on micro environmental habitat exploitation by the butterfly. I'm a major contributor to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Kino Recovery Plan and development of their survey protocol for field biologists. The Keno population complex at Proctor Valley is an integral and irreplaceable part of the larger functional meta population extending to the Mexican border. This Proctor Valley complex represents perhaps as much as a quarter of the whole thing. Here, the butterfly relies on a very rare and delicate ecological circumstance involving the convergence of special geological cryptobiotic soil slope exposure, and other factors which combine to form the peculiar ecological conditions for Kino. These conditions exist predominantly on the lands proposed for exchange out of conservation at the core of this Kino population complex, conditions not on land offered for the exchange. These special conditions cannot be replicated, restored, manufactured, created, or recreated, a fact acknowledged by wildlife in documents filed in this matter. Indeed, over many years, I have personally participated in restoration efforts and never seen success with respect to Kino. An extinction threshold is approached with each loss from the existing metapopulation fabric. It is the old case of which straw will break the camel's back. As such, this land exchange contemplates an extinction experiment. I love experiments as a biologist, but not one so damaging. As an ecologist, I would say no to the exchange. Unfortunately, the results of this one won't be known for years or decades. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Claire Schlotterbeck, followed by Rob Hamilton, Travis Longcore, Preston Brown. So Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Hills for Everyone is a 40-year-old nonprofit that founded Chino Hills State Park. We are now working to connect the resource-rich lands of the Puente Chino Hills Wildlife Corridor at the juncture of Los Angeles, Orange, San Bernardino, and Riverside counties. We strongly oppose this exchange. As someone who has worked with your board and the public for decades to protect land, I wholeheartedly endorse the letter from the land trust community. This exchange strikes at the heart of what it means to protect land. Were you just pretending when you brought it before? Because we all thought it was permanently protected. And now we find that contrived reasoning is being used to justify a decision to get rid of it. A decision that violates your own guidelines and statutes. In addition, you must resort to double counting 
protected or mitigation lands to stack the deck even further. Don't swallow this disingenuous argument. And why has there not been a single word from staff or your attorneys or the department's LCE analysis about the land conversion guidelines? This is the department's own guidance on the subject of land conversion and exchange. This guidance explicitly and absolutely prohibits the loss of this endangered species habitat. Why is this being covered up? This is just so not right. Please do not set a precedent for allowing our public lands to be disposed of due to political pressure from a developer and a local government, a decision that is not even in compliance with its own NCCP. You will open a door you will not be able to close. You must say no. If you, the Wildlife Conservation Board, don't defend these pr protected lands and species, who will? Thank you. Thank you. Rob Hamilton. Good morning, honorable members of the board. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Rob Hamilton, president of Hamilton Biological Incorporated. I have 32 years experience preparing CEQA documents in Southern California. For the past three years, I've been reviewing this project on behalf of the Endangered Habitats League. Kino checker spot butterfly, endangered species of greatest conservation concern in Proctor Valley, requires bare ground, native wildflowers, and cryptobiotic crusts. These habitat features, as Ken Osborne just mentioned, are widespread on the state reserve lands, but not on the private exchange lands. As I've shown with numerous photos, most of the exchange, land, exchange lands possess a dense, grassy understory anyone's definition, they are not suitable for Kino. That's why the exchange lands are not designated as critical habitat for the Kino and why so few Kino have ever been found there. The developer's consultant, Dudek, has never provided photos of the large areas I have disputed because they would prove my point that Dudek has been misrepresenting the exchange lands as potential Kino ha habitat for years now. The department has validated my findings regarding both mapping errors and the low value of the exchange lands for Kino, but then they've argued that these central facts should be ignored by your board. The department recommends that the land exchange project because it would reduce edge effect, yet the EIR for the original project identified no significant edge effect. Let me repeat, the EIR for the original project said there would be no significant edge effect. This is the fraud that's at the heart of this whole bizarre process. This massive contradiction is not corrected by the state trading away reserve lands in the middle of Proctor Valley in exchange for inferior lands near Hamul. Your board can help resolve the contradiction by demanding adequate biological surveys, accurate habitat mapping, and credible CEQA analysis. The public can't trust a process in which fraudulent contradictions are tolerated and papered over out of expediency. Thank you for your service to our great state and for your time and consideration. Thank you. Travis Longcore. This is Dr. Travis Longcore. I'm a conservation scientist at UCLA. I was on the original federal recovery team for Keno Checker Spot Butterfly and helped write the recovery plan. I've also worked on conservation of over half a dozen other endangered butterflies in California and around the country. I'm president of Los Angeles Audubon Society and we strenuously opposed the land swap. Proctor Valley was always known to be important to the recovery of Chino Checker Spot since we were working on that recovery plan starting back in the late 1990s. It would be a conservation disaster to develop the occupied habitat in the heart of the valley. The department appears to have made up a set of considerations for its determination of biological value of the lands that are not in the statute. These appeals to connectivity and reserve design are really irrelevant if you destroy core Kino habitat, and they're not in the statute. The county's own EIR, as Rob just said, determined the original development would not have edge effects, and yet now we're claiming we're going to reduce all these edge effects that the county has already told us don't exist. And no offense, but neither agency's biologists are in a position right now to do an independent analysis of this very politicized project, and that's why you're hearing different things from independent biologists, like the very experts that the agency biologists turn to from time to time and time again for advice. People like Ken Osborne and Rob Hamilton. As a conservationist, I'm appalled at the conclusions of both the state and federal environmental review supporting this exchange were determined in advance 
by a decision that was made under political pressure, a position that these agencies were put into by the County of San Diego. There's no wonder then that the analysis is so contrived. We're asking Wildlife Conservation Board to stand up for conservation scientists and reject the bootstrap conclusions that have been made to justify it. Please deny this exchange. Great, thank you. Preston Brown, followed by Susan Baldwin, Susan Leibies, and Mike McCoy. Preston Brown. Yeah, you have a really bad connection. Uh, you have a really bad connection. Um, maybe I have to fly, come back. Maybe I'll just call in. I call in. Yeah, please call in, and I'll I'll recall you at some point down the list. That'd be great. That'd be great. Because um, we we have a power power outage here in this county, and um, I'm very much with my phone. Okay. Yeah, we can't really understand you. So please call back in on the phone line and let. The last know who you are, and we'll call on you shortly. Okay, thank you. Uh, Susan Baldwin. Thank you. Uh, my name is Susan Baldwin, and I am a former Sandag planner, now volunteer working on land use, housing, and environmental issues, and I'm president of San Diegans for Managed Growth. <clears throat> Um, I am here today to testify regarding the broad opposition of the environmental community, national, state, and local, who are all deeply concerned about and opposed to this exchange. 31 organizations committed to our environment are in opposition, a number of which are here today, and I will list them. The Environmental Center of San Diego, California Wildlife Foundation, Center for Biological Diversity, Western Alliance for Nature, Friends of Harbors, Beaches, and Parks, Defenders of Wildlife, Sierra Club California, the Urban Wildlands Group, Palos Verdes uh, Peninsula, South Bay Audubon Society, Institute for Ecological Health, Save Our Forests and Ranchlands, San Diego Coastkeeper, Preserve Wild Santee, California Chaparral Institute, Southwest Wetlands Interpretive Association, San Bernardino Valley Audubon Society, Pomona Valley Audubon Society, Buena Vista Audubon Society, Pasadena Audubon Society, Los Angeles Audubon Society, San Diegans for Managed Growth, Grow the San Diego Way, Hills for Everyone, Sea and Sage Audubon Society, California Native Plant Society, Cleveland National Forest Foundation, Palomar Audubon Society, Planning and Conservation League, and Nature for All. I and these organizations oppose the land exchange. We are willing to work collaboratively with the department, the county, the new supervisors and applicant on better solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Susan Leibis. Leibis. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Susan Liebes, Chair of the Fallbrook Land Conservancy, which is opposed to the land conversion. We own and manage land in northern San Diego County, and the Wildlife Conservation Board is our partner. We are testifying today out of concern for its mission and for the fate of California's public lands. In order to justify the exchange, misleading rationales were used to circumvent the plain language of the statute, and departmental guidelines were ignored. As said in the land trust opposition letter, to justify trading away conservation lands by double counting, the conservation value of lands that are already protected would set a devastating precedent that could lead to net loss exchanges throughout the state and threatens to shrink the corpus of protected lands that our organizations and this board have worked tirelessly to grow. Our land trust needs reliable partners, which you have heretofore been. Please do not undermine our confidence. Please do not make me call donors with the land they helped purchase with the promise that it would be permanently protected, might be traded away for political convenience. Please do not pave over land that your board bought in 2003 on behalf of all Californians with the following. Provide for the permanent protection of important biological, scenic, cultural, and historic resources. On behalf of the members of the Fallbrook Land Conservancy and our board of directors, please deny this land conversion. Thank you. Thank you. Mike McCoy, followed by Hello? Dan, 
Yeah, just one minute. Mike McCoy, then followed by Dan Silver, Larry Wan, and Jess Morton. Hello. So Mike McCoy. This is Preston. Okay, Preston, please go. Preston Brown. Um, hello. Uh, great. Uh, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. This, this is Mike McCoy. Okay, Mike, can you hold on just one second? Sure. Preston yeah. Brown, please go. Um, good morning. My name is Preston Brown. I'm a member of the Mold Dozera Planning Committee Group, and today I'm speaking as an individual. I've lived here for t in a mold for 20 years, and I've been a member of the board for 14. I'm opposed to the land exchange. This range war for housing spoiled lands has corrupted the process. Our board of supervisors hell bent on new housing keeps churning out pipe dream, retro carbon glutton cannibal sprawl projects that offer no affordable housing. And most damningly, the prominent issues of public safety of wildfire, emergency evacuation, and failing infrastructure of backcountry roads get swept under the rug when projects come up for a vote. In an emergency special meeting on June 2nd, the night before the Board of Supervisors hearing for Village 14, our planning group debated for two hours and voted seven to four to reject the wild, the weep, the wildland emergency evacuation plan for Village 14 and the DEIR. Just five days earlier, we had received the road report commissioned by the San Diego County Fire Authority to evaluate the weep of Village 14. This report was published on March 11th and only made available uh, on, on May 29th after three requests to the Board of Supervisors. In the summary of findings, this report warned of fire entrapment on Proctor Valley Road in Amul. Additionally, it faulted the WEEP for not including Hamul residents evacuating on Proctor Valley Road. Talk about erosion of public trust. Second point, we have this new thing in San Diego County of dueling Cal fire chiefs. In the Lilac Hill Spall Project, we have former Cal Fire Chiefs joining the sales teams of developers going against the county, the county chief, Tony Meacham's opinion that there was extreme danger of fire entrapment. And just to demoralize you all in the WCB uh, a little further, through a long okay, trail of... Please finish scenery, your comments this, up. This package has your arrived in your lap. Okay, a, for a full throttled hypocrisy, in the last days of August, our Board of Supervisors recently approved the Village 13, praising okay. its integrity for upholding the MSCP hard line. Please conclude. Well it, well, it negated, yeah, Village 14, whatever that means. Come on, members of the WC okay, Board, conclude. zoom back and look at the whole picture. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike McCoy. Followed by Dan Silver and Larry Wan. Mike, I think you're on mute now. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Hello? Go Hello. ahead. Uh, my name is Mike McCoy. I represent the Southwest Wetlands Interpretive Association. We restore wetlands in Southern California in partnership in certain instances with Wildlife Conservancy Conservation Board. And we're in opposition to the land exchange and request for denial. San Diego County is one of the most biodiverse counties in the United States, adding to the importance of your decision today. This land, land exchange is unprecedented, enables noncompliance with this NAT and CCP, and sets a dangerous precedent by ignoring the department's own land conversion guidelines, which absolutely prohibits this exchange. As a conservationist and wildlife veterinarian, I think this decision will lead to a lack of confidence and integrity in protecting, enhancing, and restoring public lands and species that were promised for permanent protection by allowing political pressure resulting in conversion to a housing development. This decision undermines public faith in the process. Pressure applied from private developers would set a precedent statewide. The exchange will result in bad biological outcomes, putting a massive development in the most poss possible lo impossible location for connection and protection of habitat and dependent species. We'll never protect California's natural resources from climate change and other threats if we tolerate the corruption of science by outcomes based on economic and political expediency. 
the Wildlife Conservation Board should act independently and deny the exchange <clears throat> and allow a new board of supervisors to reassess the underlying dispute. The county will be obligated to revisit this project's compliance with the MSCP, endangered species, greenhouse gas emissions, and fire risk in the course of project approval. The election shows that people of San okay. Diego County please, want to change Please conclude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dan Silver followed by Larry Wan and Amy Spear. Good morning, honorable board members, Dan Silver, Endangered Habitats League. The story here is no time to conduct surveys, false double counting. Hello. Amy, yeah, just one minute, Amy. Amy Spear, yeah, please hold, I'll call you. Compromise of staff, irreplaceable habitat loss, safeguards of law and policy violated. Land trusts up and down California are up in arms. But what would happen after denial? And what are the ramifications to long-term conservation? The applicant cannot build an illegal project. That is the deal to be kept here. And a new environmentally conscious board of supervisors will revisit MSCP compliance as the first step. There may no longer be a dispute at all. I've watched as the partnership has deteriorated, as the county has treated the, the department like it was an enemy. This now changes. One board member voted against this project twice. One new member has asked you to deny. The other, replacing Supervisor Cox, opposed a development nearby due to fire safety. There is a new board majority. Director Bonham was in a very bad position, but now a collaborative opportunity is at hand. Next, losing the public's trust would jeopardize this agency's lifeblood, which is funding. Without it, we can't establish climate resistance, but bond and legislative acts require votes. This exchange is a red flag that says you cannot trust the state with your money. Anti-tax groups would make paving over this land and enriching a developer exhibit one. This is perilous. I've reviewed every land exchange. None remotely has the toxic optics, the toxic optics of this one. For the sake of California's future, it is vital not to make this mistake. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Larry Wan. Good morning, this is Larry Wan. Am I connected? Yes. Thank you. I am speaking on behalf of the Western Alliance for Nature post this exchange and share the grave concerns of many other land trusts and cons conservation groups. When our group donates and raises money for land acquisition, a lack of confidence in long-term protection and stewardship is like pulling the rug out from under us. This exchange violates the durability in conservation that we all rely upon. Right now, we're in the middle of attempting to negotiate the preservation of land in Marin County to protect the northern spotted owl, which we hope to eventually turn over to the San Rafael Open Space District. One of the parcels where there is an active nest must be purchased with money we are attempting to raise. Please explain to me how I can, if this is approved, tell prospective donors with a straight face that the land will be permanently protected. It obviously will no longer have such protection. As explained in the land trust letter, this proposal exchange of lands does not even pass the lab test as to the minimal requirements that com conversion should not take place unless there are extraordinary and indisputable benefits that could occur. The benefits here are at best dubious and wholly undermined by double counting of already protected land and by the loss of endangered species habitat, which experts tell us cannot be recreated on the lands the department will receive due to the wrong soils. Another problem is that already protected or mitigation bank lands should never be counted as benefits of an exchange. Certain parcels are considered key benefits despite the fact that the department has repeatedly determined in writing that these parcels are pre-existing NCCP preserved. Similarly, almost 200 
acres of land and consider it a benefit. Hey, please, please conclude. Thank yes, you. Please, please deny this proposal. Thank you. All right. Amy Spear, followed by Jess Morton and Melanie Schlotterbeck and nice. Pam Hetherington. Uh, good morning. My name is Amy Spear. I live in East County and I am in support of the Rancho Homul land exchange. County, state, and federal environmental officials all agree this plan is better for the environment. Please trust your staff and vote yes today. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Jess Morton. Please go. I represent the Palos Verdes South Bay Audubon Society. We have been working with the endangered butterfly species for 40 years. Well, the Kino checker spot butterfly is no longer part of our local biodiversity it once was. It is our hope that it not fall victim to development in other places as it did in ours. You have before you a proposal that runs counter to that hope. It is one that defies both reason and responsibilities of government. Lands that have one of the few remaining Kino populations Lands that are already preserved and dedicated to the preservation of this rare butterfly are to be swapped for lesser lands that have neither the butterfly nor the habitat that would support it. And yet, this is supposed to be good for the butterfly. Had the proposal included a complete and believable restoration plan guaranteeing an eventual net gain for the Kino, perhaps the deal, though still questionable, could have been considered. However, not even the beginnings of a plan are on offer. It is understandable why this is so. The exchange lands were not designated critical habitat at the time the preserved lands were because they simply were not suitable for the butterfly. But they contained potential Kino habitat, they would now be marked as critical habitat themselves. And today's conversation about its uses would be quite different. California's rich biodiversity is at risk for many reasons. Some are intractable. Other risks can be dealt with easily. This is one of them. Please deny the proposed land swap. Thank you. Great, thank you. Melanie Schlotterbeck. Good morning, my name is Melanie Schlotterbeck. I'm with Friends of Harbors, Beaches and Parks, which is a Southern California based nonprofit working to protect the natural lands, waterways and beaches of Orange County. We oppose the land exchange. Numerous lands in have been protected through funding from the Wildlife Conservation Board. And because of that, we have magnificent parks and refuges, including lands in the foothills of the Santa Ana Mountains, to the coastal wetlands of Bolsa Chica. FHBP is dedicated to maintaining this park, ensuring continued stewardship of the natural resources, and when necessary, defending it from threats. If WCB moves forward with this proposal, we, like the land trusts, will lose confidence in the integrity of our parks and public lands, and will instead know that they can be traded away for dubious reasons in disregard of the law and statute. The message this trade-off gives to the public is that lands purchased with their tax dollars are open for high-end developments on the basis of contrived rationales and as a result of plan non-compliance. We cannot allow a standard to be set that double counts already protected land as benefits. Please protect the integrity of our parks and reserves and deny this exchange. Thank you. Great. Pam Heather Heatherington. Followed by Cynthia Wooten and Sarah Wan. Pam Hetherington. Good morning. I am Pam Hetherington, Board of Directors, Environmental Center of San Diego. The promise of permanence of conservation lands is being threatened with this proposal, and we strongly oppose it. Specifically, in the dispute resolution agreement, <laughs> The department stripped away its rights to judge the facts objectively in its required land conversion evaluation. Even when faced with the information on mismapping, the department is contractually prohibited from changing its. It could be sued for breach of contract by the developer. This is not how I believe California's government should operate. As for the exchange itself, we know that new development should generally be sited adjacent to existing development. 
This land exchange does, exchange does the opposite. It puts all development in the middle of Proctor Valley and blocks connectivity between the Hamul Mountains and Mount San Miguel. The proposed exchange does nothing except worsen connectivity as Proctor Valley 1 and 3 are already protected by the Multiple Species Conservation Plan. We ask that you preserve the integrity of conserved lands by rejecting the exchange. Just because it may be legal doesn't make it right. Thank you. Great, thank you. Cynthia Wooten. Cynthia Wooten. Sarah Wan. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Sarah Wan for the Western Alliance for Nature. This proposed swap sets an incredible number of bad precedents that include not only the permanency of protected lands, but also the intent and meaning of the MSCP and NCCP processes, as well as substantially lessening, lessening the protection for a critically endangered species. Developers and jurisdictions would be sent a message that they can violate NCCPs. They can ignore the department's repeated letters and eventually pressure the department and get what they want. The exchange is absolutely the wrong answer biologically. There was a complete lack of any scientific basis for trading away high quality habitat for non-suitable land for the purpose intended. It will set a precedent for how to drive a species into extinction, not how to save it. This trade is directly in opposition to what the governor, governor of the state intends. If we take Newsom seriously, we should not pave over prime endangered species habitat that is currently protected. We need to put more land under protection, not less. The exchange would result in a large net loss of irreplaceable Kino butterfly resources. That is how extinction occurs and biodiversity is lost. To protect these species, the development should be removed from the center of Proctor Valley, which is the most important location for both species. As a former regulator and biologist, biologist, I am at a loss to understand the justification for this. Regardless of why your staff entered into the agreement, it is your responsibility to make your independent final decision and carry out your obligation to protect habitat and species. No decision is without precedent. In this case, the habitat and species will, that depend on it will suffer irreparable harm if the trade is allowed. The only one who benefits from this will be the developer who will exchange land of far and habitat value for biologically valuable public land, and that will enable him to profit by his development. You know what is the right thing to do, and I ask you to do it. Please deny the trade. Great, thank you. So Hello. Cynthia Wooten. Yes. Hello. I'm Cynthia Wooten from the Conservation Board of the San Diego Chapter of the Sierra Club. I'm here to read most of the letter written to you by Supervisor-elect Tara Lawson-Remmer as follows. Dear members oh, of the we board. We lost your connection. Hello? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. The letter written to you by uh, Sarah... Tara Lawson Remmer as follows. Dear members of the board, I was recently elected to the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. I would welcome the opportunity to reassess the Otai Ranch 14 project. If the land exchange is denied, the county will revisit the project's compliance with the MSCP. Productive discussions can then ensue with the applicant, state, and federal life, wildlife agencies on alternate solutions. I'm particularly troubled that the county appears not to have adequately addressed MSCP, endangered species, greenhouse gas, and fire risk in the course of project approval. I'm also aware of major concerns on the part of land trust and conservation communities over adverse precedents in terms of compliance with state law and departmental guidelines regarding conversions of public land. As the result of recent elections, it shows that the people of San Diego want a change of direction. For these reasons, reasons I urge denial of the land exchange proposal. Yours truly, Tara Lawson Remmer, Supervisor-elect, 3rd District, San Diego. Now, there is a majority in the Board of Supervisors. The new board will work cooperatively with the department and applicant 
Please protect the confidence placed in WCB to protect public lands. Please deny the exchange and allow the new board this critical opportunity. Thank you very much for considering. Great, thank you. Okay, next up is David Lenardi, followed by Patrick Walker, Caitlin Kumuth, and Lisa Cohen. David Lenardi. Patrick Walker. Uh, Caitlin Kumuth. Lisa Cohen. Good morning. My name is Lisa Cohen. Um, I am the CEO of the Chula Vista Chamber of Commerce and the Chula Vista Convention and Visitors Bureau. We support the land exchange because it will expand the humble ecological reserve by more than 300 acres of high quality open space. The county, state, and federal environment officials all agree this plan is better for the environment. We ask that you trust the Wildlife Conservation Board staff and vote yes. We respectfully ask for your request, your vote yes today. Thank you. Great, thank you. Next up is Mark Wardlaw, followed by Andrew Meyer, Jim Hi. Pugh, and Bill Tippett. Hi, can you hear this me? This is Patrick Walker, 2881. Okay, so Patrick Walker, you go, please. Good morning, my name is Patrick Walker, and I'm the 10th District Vice President. Good morning, members of the Wildlife Conservation Board. I'm Mark Wardlaw, Director of Planning and Development Services for the County of San Diego. I'd like to thank the board for the opportunity to speak to you, and I'd like to express my our support the the Otai Ranch Village 14 land exchange. I'd also like to acknowledge that this indeed has been an, a challenging project, and we very much appreciate the efforts of the wildlife agencies in developing and supporting this land exchange project. The requested land exchange will implement an amendment to the Village 14 project that was approved by the County Board of Supervisors on June 3rd, 2020. The land exchange is consistent with the density and intensity identified in our county general plan, which was adopted in 2011. In addition, the land exchange will also carry out the vision for the Otai Ranch General Development Plan, which was a collaborative master plan for the development within the city of Chula Vista and the unincorporated area approved in 1993. The requested land exchange will consolidate the development footprint reduce edge effects of new development and cluster development within a compact village, implementing the goals and policies of the county's general plan. The exchange is also consistent with the county's multiple species conservation program or MSCP. The 219 acres requested to be exchanged by the state have been identified for development in the MSCP, the county general plan and the Otai Ranch plan since as early as 1993. Lastly, we approved the project amendment as conditional on the WCB's approval of the land exchange. As a result, if the WCB doesn't approve the land exchange, the amendment will not take effect and the original project approval from June 26, 2019 will remain effective. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to express our support for the requested exchange. We're available for questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick Walker. Patrick. Do you have me now? This is Patrick Walker. Yes, please go. All right, thank you. My name is Patrick Walker. I'm the 10th District Vice President for Cal Fire Firefighters Local 2081. I represent the firefighters of San Diego County Fire. I'm calling in today because Cal Fire Local 2081 supports the Rancho Homo land exchange you're considering today. This land exchange will lead to a more consolidated development for Village 14 in the Otay Ranch area. This means that it'll improve fire defensibility and increase public safety measures for Village 14 and the surrounding communities. The land exchange actually reduces wildland interface by 70%. 
We're proud to support the land exchange and the resulting consolidated development. For these reasons, we encourage you to support and approve the proposed land exchange today. Thank you. Great, thank you. Caitlin Kymus. Hello, I'd like to read comments for Mr. Leonardi, David Leonardi, who had to step out. Is this a good time? Yes, please go. Thank you. Good morning, members of the Wildlife Conservation Board. My name is David Leonardi, and I am president of the, De of the Deputy Sheriff's Association of San Diego County. Our association represents more than 2,500 public safety officials serving communities throughout San Diego County. The land exchange proposed to you today will lead to an improved, consolidated community that enhances public safety within this community and all those surrounding. It will also help our members live closer to the communities they put their lives on the line to protect. We also support the agency's decisions and recommendations as this land exchange was supported and approved by the San Diego County Planning Commission, Board of Supervisors, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. For these reasons, please support the land exchange today. Great, thank you. So Caitlin Kumuth, followed by Andrew Meyer, Jim Pugh, and Bill Tippetts. Wonderful. Thank yes, wonderful. Thank you. My name is Caitlin Cometh, and I am representing the San Diego Regional Chamber of Commerce. I am speaking today on behalf of the San Diego Regional Chamber of Commerce in support of the Rancho Humboldt Land Exchange. The Chamber supports the land exchange because it is a win-win for the region. It will consolidate and improve the development footprint as determined by the San Diego County General Plan. I ask you to please consider this land exchange today and support this. Thank you. Great, thank you. Andrew Meyer. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm the Director of Conservation at the San Diego Audubon Society, a long-term MSCP stakeholder, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk before the board today. Uh, <clears throat> we oppose the land swap and strongly encourage the Wildlife Conservation Board to stay true to their ecological principles. Um, this area of San Diego County is the place where I have seen my first white-tailed uh, kite. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot. Uh, it's my first and only white-tailed kite so far, so I would like to keep the habitat just the way that it is. The appraisals, uh, I'd like to mention, talk about the appraisals that have been mentioned several times already. They were based on indefensible assumptions dictated by the applicant's attorney. The major investors back in this project would give up land worth $56 million in exchange for land worth $31 million. That's absurd, and it's bad business. And uh, the question then is, how gullible do they think that we are? These false assumptions show no monetary discount for trying to develop lands where no take is authorized, and conversely, they do not account for the benefit of gaining land adjacent to other development and its infrastructure, removing the expense of extending sewer and other utility lines. But most crucially, these lopsided values can only be explained by counting the developer's 192-acre mitigation bank and the 147-acre Proctor Valley 1, 2, and 3 parcels as gains in the ledger. Please remember that the taxpayers paid $22 million in 2003 for its suite of properties in Proctor Valley. This investment is being squandered. Without double counting, there is a net loss of land. An independent appraisal was not performed for this project, and this biases all the arguments that come from it. In conclusion, please deny a land exchange that would create a private financial windfall by trading away highly valuable state property acquired with tens of millions in taxpayer funds to a private developer, allowing for a more profitable development of greater intensity at the expense of lands that state staff have clearly said has greater biological value. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jim Pugh, Bill Tippetts, and Peter Anderson. Jim Pugh. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I'm Jim Pugh. I'm the conservation chair of the San Diego Audubon Society. Uh, this development would be extremely bold and viable. The location has burned twice in the last 15 years. It's encouraging to wildlife conservation board. Number A1 strategic goal is to fund projects and land that provide resilience for native wildlife plant species in the face of climate change. According to the U.S. Department of Interior, 90% of wild trees are started by people. This project will bring a lot of people, and there's a significant about sparse adolescent murders, sparks dragging gill pipes, Children playing with matches, sparks, equipment, etc. These wildfire risks will increase. 
as a climate change. The likely additional fires will put the residents of this project in existing downward communities at increased risk. Expert studies show that evacuation is a gridlock even before a rapid requires to it. This will make the risk to residents even worse. The increased frequency of wildfires will also degrade the in the nearby preserve area. This will reduce their ability to support uh, keep the but butterfly and many other things. This loss will also increase the climate. So if you're cutting out, so please. The proposed development, the proposed exchange uh, is not resilient to climate change in any way. Please, please do not accept its dysfunctional landscape just to facilitate its very inappropriate damage and high risk of all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Tippetts. Bill Tippetts, Peter Anderson. Yes, can you hear me? This is Bill. Yes. Okay. Hi, Bill. Bill Tippett, hi. Uh, I'm a member of the Southwest uh, Wetlands Interpretive Association Board. Um, I'm also a conservation biologist who's worked for 40 years throughout California. And from 1993 to 2004, I was the Department of Fish and Wildlife's NCC PHCP Program Manager for Southern California. One of the plans I oversaw was the MSCP. And while the NCCP and MSCPs were never expected to be static plans, and there may be valid reasons to amend them, my organization opposes the proposed land exchange for the following reasons. First of all, Otay Ranch, as part of the county's plan, was approved in 1998. The developer only proposed this actual development a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, there's no need for the, the board to be rushed into a decision that is not defensible. So the Rancho Hamul lands retain their high values. They've got endangered species that need con that that subs <laughs> sorry that that meet the Section 509516 Public Resources Code. That they're high value and should not be uh, removed. In addition, the proposed land exchange does not meet the test provided for MSCP findings that you have to evaluate habitat quality, configuration, location, covered species values. In total. The exchange does not satisfy um, the, the equitable exchange. Um, also, this would be a terrible precedent. There are 165 people on this call already. If you think this is not gonna establish a precedent, I, I sincerely dispute that contention. So I highly um, I recommend that the board reconsider this, do not approve it at this point, let this be taken back for more negotiations amongst the parties. Thank you. Thank you. So Peter Anderson, followed by JP Verge and Libby yes, Lucas. Uh, Please go. This is Dr. Peter Anderson. I'm representing Sierra Club, California, and our 375,000 members, and we oppose this land swap. We applaud our partner, the Wildlife Conservation Board, uh, because we've entered into so many fabulous agreements and collaborations with them past. But today, you are being presented with a false alternative. Every proponent has said this is a choice between a bad project and an amended project. That is simply untrue. There's two other alternatives, a reduced project and no project. As you've heard, just on November 3rd, we elected a new board of supervisors. All three of the majority of that new board of supervisors opposed the Otay Ranch projects. Uh, uh, all of them are either on record as originally opposing this project, opposing Otay Ranch in general, and you heard from Tara Lawson Reamer, the new representative who opposes this project. So do not believe that you, if you vote uh, in favor of this land swap, you're voting to save a bad project. In fact, I was at hearings when the developer claimed that they could not build this project without this amendment. In fact, this amendment included about 200 new homes and this, it just doesn't work out for this big project to be configured 
on the current land with, in fact, uh, this without this land swap. So let's do some more negotiation. This is not about two projects. This is about the stewardship of our public land. In 2003, you purchased this land to, quote, provide permanent protection of important biological, scenic, cultural, and historic resources, and to maintain the wildlife movement corridors between Proctor Valley and nearby lands. Please right. reject and swap. Great, thank you. JP Thurburge, Libby Lucas, and Carol Lacey. JP. Yes, hi. Uh, my name is uh, JP Thaverish. I represent Grow the San Diego Way, a think tank and advocacy for smart land use, housing, and growth in a sustainable and equitable way. For decision makers to make a variance from existing policy that will potentially damage public trust um, and taxpayer money, a strand case needs to be made that it will provide a benefit that exceeds those harms. I'll let the independent biologists make their clear case. I'm going to focus on housing. One of the main claims being made by this developer and the supporters is that the project will provide workforce housing. Unfortunately, the data does not support that. The project will be 100% market rate in which the market sets the price of the housing. There's no deed restricted, moderate, or low income housing in this project, and the developer has not provided any substantiation on pricing or income levels. The current market price point for all homes in the Chula Vista area, according to Zillow Analytics, is $585,000. That includes old units and new units, multifamily and single family. Newly built homes are averaging almost 100,000 more, and single family homes, which is the majority of what this project will be, are averaging 750 to 850,000 as, as of October of this year. At those price points, a household would need to earn between 163,000 and 210,000 to afford these homes. This is between 180 and 240% of the median household income of San Diego County, which firefighters and uh, first responders and other workforce households simply cannot afford. You add in the HOA fees and Melrose and the income requirement goes up to $12,000. More importantly, the market for high-end housing is saturated. Chula Vista has actually exceeded its state mandated RENA requirements for above moderate housing by 188%. That's 108% and has done so, and it's been doing that for historically. High-end home production like this are dominating. And on the other hand, they've only produced 16% of their low and moderate income housing requirements. So it is in the low end where we have the most challenges and this project does nothing to address that. Grow the San Diego Way believes that if there's going to be radical diversion from established conservation policies that will hurt the public, there should be at least a verifiable and okay, please event. conclude your comments. Yes, this project does not meet that standard. Please oppose it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Libby Lucas, Kara Lacey and Christopher Carnes. Libby. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Good morning, members of the board. I worked for 12 years in the NCCP program at CDFW. I've been retired for eight years. Because the proposed land exchange is wrong for several reasons, I urge you to deny it. Exchanging conserved lands to accommodate development is a slippery slope, particularly so in this case, as one, the lands known as PV1 and PV3 proposed to be added as conserved are already conserved, having been designated preserved per the South County MSCP adopted in 1997, superseding the 1993 Otay Ranch plan. These parcels do not have vested de development rights. Two, the exchange would result in a considerable net loss of suitable habitat for the keynote checker spot butterfly. Three, the lands proposed to be removed were were acquired with section six funds for federally listed species. Before you vote today, please inquire about these facts if you are not clear on them. While at CDFW, I reviewed proposed project related adjustments to conserve lands within the South County MECP area, area. These adjustments are always applicable to only the boundaries of conserved areas, not entire parcels. Based on my professional experience, it's a sure bet that CDFW and FSW, FWS staff would have used their rightful discretion under the MSCP to prohibit the proposed exchange of PV1 and PV3. Obviously, this MSCP required process was bypassed and for what appear to have been serious impropri improprieties at both the federal and state level, the matter was taken out of CDFW's and FS FWS's career staffers control and now both those agencies and WCB staff have made the wrong call. 
I urge you to rectify this and avoid setting the bad precedents that have been mentioned already. Please deny the land. Okay, thank you. Finish. Can you please conclude? <laughs> Okay, Kara Lacey. Hey, by, can you hear me? Yes, but please just one minute. Followed by Christopher Carnes, Robert Croner, and Marcella Berdera. Good morning. Kara. I'm Kara Lacey with the Nature Conservancy. Thank you for letting me speak here today. The Nature Conservancy, together with conservationists, the agencies, and developers, work to build out the preserve system and create the Rancho Humul Ecological Reserve. We did this parcel by parcel and acre by acre for decades. This protection is an example of effective public-private partnerships. The proposed land exchange, if approved, reverses that extensive good work and the time and investments placed in protecting one of the most biodiverse regions in the country. We should all be alarmed when there's backsliding on what we have invested so much in achieving together. When our land trusts with agencies work with the agencies to protect lands, we invest knowing that the land will remain protected in perpetuity. That permanence, that security is what our organizations rely on. We're not here to speak out against development. We know that San Diego needs housing and affordable housing. We are here to say that confidence, that conservation actions are durable, is essential to the long-term success of habitat protection and conservation plans, ones that reduce conflict and facilitate housing in the right places. Of course, we understand there's flexibility built in, but if there's a willingness to exchange critically important protected lands to facilitate development, then a harmful precedent is set in motion. You know the adage, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? Well, what happens in San Diego will not stay in San Diego. The action taken today, if the exchange is approved, would weaken the effectiveness and undermine the intent and integrity of NCCPs and state ecological reserves, resulting in ramifications here and throughout California. From the beginning, San Diego's regional conservation effort has been one long haul public-private partnership. Every gain along the way has been hard earned. That some of our most significant shared accomplishments can just be undone rattles us and undermines the confidence we, land trusts, and the public have in this very process. We ask that your decision today lay the foundation for all of us to work together to find a better solution, more suitable solution for housing and nature while protecting irreplaceable biodiversity. Thank you for your time. Great, thank you. Uh, Christopher Carnes, followed by Robert Cromer. Uh, good morning. Is it working? Yes. Oh, good morning. Uh, I am a former city planner and I have a distant view of Proctor Valley from my house. Um, but I was commenting on the fact that the reports are presenting that this doesn't cost the state any money. And in fact, the appraisal, whether correctly done or not, is stating that the developer is giving $25 million away in property, which I believe they can use as a tax write-off in the future. Uh, so it will in fact cost the state money in terms of their, they can write off a paper loss. But also in listening to the hearing today, there seems to be a lot of questions being raised about the environmental, which was not in any of the reports that I read and about the net loss of land and mitigation because it's not counting what's already been committed. And I believe before this board makes a decision, those questions should really be answered and clearly done in a public hearing. Uh, they're not, to the best of my knowledge, answered at any point. And also the question came up about edge treatment and that the county's approval uh, and the environmental document said there was no impact. And again, that's something that should be explained since one of the decisions by the state is that this reduces the edge impacts when in fact, it doesn't appear nobody's ever reviewed it uh, from these comments. And thirdly, the board is being asked to make a political decision. And as said at the beginning of this hearing, it's unique to have a December meeting. And as, no, as I know from experience, December meetings are when questionable projects are put before boards, city councils, and planning commissions. Um, so one, I'm opposed to this, but second, I think this hearing should be continued to answer many of the questions raised today. That concludes my meeting. Great, thank you. Uh, Robert Cromer. Yes, good morning. Um, my name is Robert Cromer. I'm the president of 
the Pacific Southwest Association of Realtors, and I'm in support of the Rancho um, Hamul Land Exchange. As we all know, uh, we have a housing shortage here in California. This is the case in our area as well. We only have one month of supply of housing. A healthy market uh, typically has three to four months. Um, this is not just due to the pandemic. According to the building industry, San Diego needs to build 12,000 housing units every year just to um, to meet demand. Uh, currently in San Diego County, uh, building is less than half of that. Um, this is causing prices to rise by double digit increases, um, making many of our potential homeowners and businesses um, have to move out of the state of California. Uh, this new plan allows for obtainably priced townhomes um, that replace the larger lot um, ranchettes that were proposed in the previous plan. Um, this is tremendously helpful for our, our adult children and next generation um, buyers. Um, a earlier speaker spoke about that uh, this is not going to supply any affordable housing. Um, this is going to, our area that we are currently in um, this, this development we're talking about is lower priced than many parts of San Diego County. So this gives opportunities to um, new buyers um, that are military, um, heroes that um, um, serve our public as far as um, in the medical industry, um, firefighters and so forth. Um, this gives an opportunity also to increase housing um, where people can move up to some of the bigger lots um, that are proposed in this new plan and open up smaller townhomes for other people in San Diego County. Um, I ask the board to please um, consider this and vote yes um, and help support our governor in achieving his housing goals. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, Marcella Verdeja, Ber Verdeja, followed by Jade Celentano and Beck Cortez. Marcella? Okay, Jade Celentano. Beck Cortez. Celentano. Okay, please. Proceed. Hi, Jade. this is Jay Celentano. Yes, hi. Hi. Can I, hi, can I speak? Yes, please go. Okay, sure. I am not a biologist, ecologist, planner, or developer. I appreciate the hard work and passions and pro of proponents and opponents of this project. Um, as an average citizen, so to speak, I need to weigh the pros and cons of the information provided and consider how our community will be affected. I love wildlife, butterflies, but I believe our priority is the human race. And while preservation is important, I think progress is essential. So that being said, I trust the expertise of the WCB and encourage your yes vote today. Thank you. Great, thank you. Beck Cortez, followed by Donna Hendricks, Jane Block, and Kathleen Hamilton. Beck Cortez. Donna Hendricks. Donna Hendricks. Jane Block. Uh, I'm Donna Hendricks is here. Yes, please go. Uh, yes, I too uh, support the uh, project as presented. And I believe uh, as the previous speaker said, our top priority needs to be um, the human race. And I believe that they provide, this uh, project provides housing, which we desperately need. And as you can tell, we have hundreds of acres, thousands of acres of open space. We are very limited right now in backlog, uh, with backlog in housing. So I support the exchange. Thank you. Great, thank you. Jane Block, followed by Kathleen Hamilton and Marsha Hanscom. Jane. Kathleen Hamilton. Marsha Hanscom. Kathleen Hamilton. Who is that? And I'm part of Save Our Southwest Hills in Temecula. 
I would like to address the Wildlife Conservation Board. Two roads diverged. Take the high road, please. It's tough, it's hard, and it's right. Thank you. Thank you. Marsha Hanscom, followed by Anika Friss. Friss. Marsha? Hello, Marsha Hanscom. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, Marsha Hanscom, I'm here representing Californians for the Defense of Ecological Reserves. This collection of California citizens was formed this last week, and it shouldn't have been necessary to form this organization. California Department of Fish and Wildlife should be doing the job of defending ecological reserves. Instead, the director is making deals like the one here, and like ones he's made in Los Angeles with a billionaire that would have placed a dog and cat hospital atop an ecological reserve. Fortunately, the public fought back that, that bad idea over three years and it's not happening. But now we're fighting back on another such deal with SoCal Gas. I listened very carefully to the rationale brought forward by the director for this land exchange that we urge you to deny. And I've heard plenty of rationales for compromising in the last 30 years of advocating for protecting fragile and imperiled habitats. Lands that are de designated as ecological reserve lands are expected to be protected. For nearly 10 years, there was no willing seller at the Bayona wetlands. There was no willing seller at the Bolsa Chica wetlands. We were told we had to approve the deals that had been made. But political leaders change, and thanks to the voters pol and political realities change when community members are organized and speak up. So preserve the ecological reserve lands you have. Encourage the emergence of a willing seller. And Dan Silver made a great point about losing support for bond money. I was a huge supporter and organized daily to get Proposition 12 to be approved in 2000, the first bond measure approved in many years. But today, I'm, a re I'm reluctant to support any bond money being approved when we've got agencies like Department of Fish and Wildlife making deals over their ecological reserve lands with private entities. Thank you. Great, thank you. Anika Fiss, followed by Sasson Hameris. Good morning, board members. My name is Anika Fish. I'd like to draw attention to a letter in, your in, your board, in support of the land exchange that has been signed by 205 of my fellow um, San Diego County residents. The letter reads as follows. I support the Rancho de Humul land exchange because it will increase protected wildlife areas within San Diego County and will increase the open space preserved by 300 acres. This is an improved preserve, des preserve design. Wildlife Conservation Board and staff has recommended this land exchange for approval. Please honor the recommendation of your staff and vote yes today. Great, thank you. Uh, Sasson, Sasson Rahimzadeh. Yes, uh, good morning. My name is Sasan Rahimzadeh. I am a local Chula Vista resident and small business owner. I am in favor of, uh, of the Rancho Homo Land Exchange. Um, as a resident here for the last 25 years, um, I am uh, frankly just as concerned as anybody else, um, both on the environmental side and the business side of things. And frankly, uh, on the overall exchange, um, I think it, it makes a tremendous amount of um, uh, uh, sense. I have served on the cities uh, of Chula Vista's Resource Conservation Commission, uh, both as a member and as a chair of it. So I'm familiar with, with the environmental impacts. However, as, um, as some of the previous um, speakers have mentioned, there's always a balance in, in, in things. And I think this particular project, which I have followed, frankly, over the last few years quite uh, in detail, I have noticed that it does take into consideration quite a bit of the environmental impact um, um, effects that we need to have in the area. So for those purposes and seeing a, a good balance between the two, um, I encourage you to vote yes on this project. Thank you. Great. Thank you. 
And before we go on to the next speaker, I just want to check in with board members and the public and let folks know we got a solid hour left of, uh, of uh, board members presentation. We're going to be losing a couple board members around the noon time. And we have about 30 uh, speakers left, which is about an hour. Uh, so we'll continue as we are. I would like to ask those making comments, you know, to please consider not reiterating uh, other things that folks have heard. Uh, you will continue to have two minutes to speak, but I do request that you respect the timing and I, cause we do want to have a board decision today if at all possible. Uh, so with that, we'll move on to Glenn Revel. Good morning. My name is Glenn Ravel, and I support the proposed Rancho Hamul land exchange. We need more collaboration and less conflict. This is an improved outcome because of the um, vast contributions made to this resolution. County, state, and federal environmental officials all agree this plan is better for the environment. Please trust your staff and vote yes today. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Glenn, Alyssa Violapando, followed by Stacy Green and Jane Mitchell, and Mary Beth Trontwine. So, Alyssa, Alyssa? Alyssa. Alyssa? Hi, my name is Alyssa Viapondo. I'm the Vice President of Hunsaker and Associates San Diego, and I'm in support of the Rancho Hamol Land Exchange. Uh, I've been in development for over 31 years. And there's always a push and pull when we're trying to provide housing in California. I support the land exchange because it's a win-win for the region, um, providing expansion of open space, um, delivering increased work, workforce, workforce housing. Um, I urge you to trust your Wildlife Conservation Board staff and vote yes today. Thank you. Great, thank you. Stacy Green. Jane Bellix Mitchell. Hello, um, I am just want to ask you if you could put Jane on in a few more speakers. She's finishing another project and she'll be done very quickly. Sure, so we'll go on to Mary Beth Trontwine. Simone Reyes. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I will keep this brief as you asked, as the arguments against allowing the construction of a housing development on 219 acres of ecologically prized San Diego County land, home to some federally endangered species, plant and animal life has been well documented in its overwhelming opposition. This proposed move is reminiscent of the song lyrics, paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Who really wants to be part of that legacy? In a painful and turbulent time in our history where we have been faced with strong lines between what is sane and insane, moral and immoral, and smart and detrimental, it is very clear that destroying this habitat is motivated by nothing more than greed. It is not what our planet needs more of given our very fragile ecosystem. Please vote for sanity and kindness and listen to the public. Please do all you can to protect this land. Thank you. Great, Michael Paul. Hi, yes, this is Caitlin Cometh asking to speak on his behalf, if that's possible. Please go forward. So I'll keep this brief as stated. Um, Michael Paul, my name is Michael Paul, and I'm a resident of San Diego. I urge you all to support the land exchange because it is the, is, it is the result of a collaborative effort between federal, state, and local agencies. Where I'm asking to please respect the staff's recommendation from all these, including the WCB agency staff, and support the land exchange today. Thank you for your consideration and time. Great, thank you. Mary Shaparo and David Gatsky. Mary Shaparo. David Gatsky. Tony Meekum.
Tony Meacham's on the call. Yeah, great. Please go. Uh, good morning, Commissioner. So thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Tony Meacham. I'm the chief of the San Diego County Fire Protection District. And as such, we were the lead agency that reviewed the fire safety with the Village 14 development. Uh, this project has been in the works for 27 years. It is part of the San Diego County General Plan and it is compliant with the South County MSCP. The previous project, or we'll backtrack, approval of the land exchange will create a for project as the previously approved project had disjointed and non-concurrent development. The proposed land exchange will consolidate the development into a clustered development, reducing 13 miles of edge effect and creating a far safer project. Should the land exchange not be approved, the previously approved project would move forward. Is therefore I'm asking for your consideration and support today, and me and my staff will remain on the line should there be questions from the commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Great, thank you. Rob Cameron, followed by Tommy Hugh. Oh, Rob Cameron. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Can you yes. hear me? Great, good morning. Uh, Rob Cameron representing the GDCI project team. I want to first thank the members of the WCB for taking the time to consider the reams of information you've been provided <clears throat> and to sincerely thank Director Bonham and the staff from the WCB. Fish and Wildlife Service for their hard work and creativity in putting this proposal together. The land exchange represents a rare opportunity to show that dispute resolution works and that conflict can be converted into positive outcome. Perhaps the most compelling aspect of the land exchange is the broad and diverse group of individuals and entities from across the political spectrum that supports this proposal. At a time when political discourse is so divided, uh, it is unheard of and speaks volumes about the merits of this land exchange to have a list of supporters that includes the San Diego County Board of Supervisors, both supervisors within whose district the project is located, CDFW staff, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service staff, WCB staff, Director Bonham, Wade Crowfoot, the California Secretary of Natural Resources, both state legislators within whose district the project is located, Assemblymember Vopel and Senator Weso, two United States Congressmen, Juan Vargas and Scott Peters, with impeccable environmental records, Chula Vista City Councilman John McCann, the Firefighters Union, Deputy Sheriff's Association, and over 150 individuals who have forwarded you letters that are part of your package. The list is indeed extensive. Why? Because the land exchange makes sense as a matter of public policy and as a matter of conservation planning. And while the list of supporters is lengthy, we're well aware that you have no direct relationship with many of those expressing support. There are, however, those that we certainly hope you'll rely on, your staff and the biologists from CDFW and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, all of whom have reviewed the project extensively and are recommending approval. You're hearing from the opposition that this project is inconsistent with San Diego's MSCP, but the experts and policymakers from all three parties actually responsible for making that determination, CDFW, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the county are telling you otherwise. We hope you'll listen to your professional and hardworking staff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tommy Huff. Lisa Levinson. Lisa Carlin. Hello, this is Lisa Levinson. Yes, please go. Thank you. So I'm Lisa Levinson representing In Defense of Animals, a California-based international animal protection nonprofit organization with 250,000 supporters and 25,000 of them residing in California. Our supporters rely on the California Department of Fish and Wildlife to protect our state's wild animals not to harm them by selling off public land for private profit. In Defense of Animals supports the full protection of wild animals in both Rancho Hamul and Biona Wetlands Ecological Reserves. Yet the chair of this board, who is also the director of the department, is asking you to support this sell-off of the public trust. Please vote to oppose the Rancho Hamul deal today and send a message to Director Bonham to withdraw the counterfeit restoration project that would help SoCal gas and harm wild animals at Biona wetlands. These private deals need to stop if we are to support the governor's wise executive orders that propose natural solutions for combating climate change. Please to protect 
state wildlands, and acquire more land, but stop construction projects on lands designated as ecological reserve. Thank you. Great, thank you. Lisa Carlin. Hi, my name is Lisa Carlin, and I'm an individual um, and a resident of Los Angeles. Um, I would like to I would like to say the GDCI Proctor Valley LP and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife has apparently struck a deal that would allow the development of these 219 acres of this pristine coastal sage scrub home to the endangered Keno check, check, checker point butterfly. This land exchange before the California Wildlife Board should not be approved. Clearly, this is a backdoor attempt to, to develop this pristine land, benefiting the developer and destroying this natural area that should be left alone. Additionally, the scary part is this will set a precedent for the future development of the protected land, such as what is going on in the Biona wetlands of Playa del Rey and all of the land trust throughout the state of California. If this board approves this land exchange, and if I were a developer, which I am not, this would be a heyday for developing ecological reserves and protected land throughout the entire coast of, of California. We cannot let this happen. Please step back and take a look at the big picture of what this land swap could really mean to the future of protected ecological land. Please evaluate the testimony of the biologists and the conservationists who are not hire guns. Anyone can hire a, a hire gun to say what they want. Let's look at the people who are true scientists and not hire guns. Only then will we get the truth. And do not be influenced by Chuck Bonham, who has clearly lost sight of his primary role in the, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the chairman of the Wildlife Life Conservation Board by not representing and speaking out in support of protecting these environments. Let's tell the truth about what's really going on here and rigorously oppose trading away the, uh, these the right. sensitive Thank ecological you. reserve Thank land you. in San Diego and oppose these deals. Thank right. you Thank very you. much. Lisa Ross. Lisa Ross. Liz Jackson. Followed by Mike Edwards. Mr. Chair, Tommy Howe here. I'm prepared to speak. Okay, please. Uh, please and this is Lisa Ross, so I can come after Tommy. Okay, Tommy Howe, please. Go. Good morning. My name is Tommy Howe. I'm a San Diego resident, and I represent 430 environmentally minded conservation voters in our region who are members of San Diego County Democrats for Environmental Action. I'm the organization's co founder, I served as its original president. And I currently serve as the organization's vice president for policy. The greenwashing being promoted by proponents of this land swap is really quite shocking. It shouldn't take much for you to see through it. There is no functional balance at work here between commercial and environmental concerns. The very suggestion of exchanging critical habitat protected as part of Rancho Humul Ecological Reserve in order to build in its place another sprawl housing project with more housing, no one who actually works for a living in our region can actually afford yeah. is so wretchedly out of step with California's once sterling reputation as an environmentally minded state that it is as unprecedented as the Trump administration's undoing of the boundaries of national monuments. That's how bad this proposal is. And that is not how we Californians expect our state agencies to behave. Why are we talking about fire concerns when we shouldn't be building here in the first place? I can't believe this board would consider for a moment that vital critical habitat for the endangered Keno checker spot butterfly, which is part of the reason these areas were already set aside in the first place as an ecological reserve over many long hours and cycles of compromise along with needed and specific habitat for so many other of our incredibly diverse roster of species in San Diego County is somehow so disposable that the reserve's already protected status is really only that of a placeholder until something more lucrative comes along that someone can make a buck on. It is abundantly clear our conservation processes at the state level and otherwise have become corrupted. Please do not approve this land swap. Please do consider, as Dan Silver testified, the toxic optics of this deal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Lisa Ross. 
Uh, good morning. Uh, this is Lisa Ross. I'm co-chair of Protect Our Preserved San Diego. We formed in response to threats to habitat pre preserved throughout San Diego with a particular focus on Del Mar Mesa. However, our interest in this exchange and project is that it would set a dreadful precedent for all San Diego preserves as the city of San Diego and the county of San Diego, which have a history of compromising our preserves we fought so hard for, uh, appro uh, approve uh, inserting new projects into and along the edges of our protected lands and in high fire areas. With all due respect to Mr. Bonham's representation of what precedent means in San Diego, experience tells us that precedent is synonymous with permission. This swap of high quality habitat lands for that of lesser quality will encourage, encourage more of the same. Observation from today, watching the testimony, people from all over the region are closely watching. Uh, we urge you to reject this swap. Thank you. Great, thank you. Liz Jackson, followed by Mike Edwards. Thank you. I was hoping you could put slide three back up on the screen. Good morning, I'm Liz Jackson representing GDCI. We're here today because of a unique conflict. We know our opponents are passionate about this exchange. We have that in common. It's disheartening to see so much opposition rooted in the premise that PV 1, 2, and 3 are preserved and that you can't approve the land exchange as a result. While many may think it's preserved and consider it to be preserved, it just isn't. And it's important to understand why. The administrative record on this topic is exhaustive and the facts answer these questions. Are PV 1, 2, and 3 included in the MSCP's written definition of preserve? No. Are they included in the 11,375 acre Otay Ranch MSCP obligation as required by the implementing agreement? No. Do the figures in the MSCP clearly demonstrate that they are preserved? No. Does the MSCP preclude their development? No. You see, when the MSCP was formulated, there were basic policy agreements. Policy number 11 stated that private property shall not be included in the preserve without the private property owner's written consent. This policy is based on law. And in 1997, instead of having written consent to convert PV 1, 2, and 3 to preserve, you had the owner's written objection. So are we at an impasse? No, quite the opposite. CDFW, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and the county, as stewards of the MSCP, realized that there was a path forward, the conflict resolution process. And as a result, they have done the deep dive into documents, agreements, and studies. They and your WCB staff after careful analysis and consideration of the facts, have determined that the please land exchange conclude. is legal and supportable. Please conclude your comments. They have determined that the conservation pattern of the land exchange meets your standards. So today, when you consider the comments on both sides of this issue, please we hope conclude. you find your staff's recommendation compelling. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Edwards. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Edwards. I've been a resident of this county since 1963. And I'm very familiar with Proctor Valley. We used to off-road in there when I was in high school. I'm also a member of the San Diego County Planning Commission, and I have been for many, many years, representing two different districts, and was on the city of Chula Vista County planning group that planned the Otay Ranch project. So I'm very familiar and the comments I make to you this morning are based upon personal knowledge, not hearsay, not speculation, and not innuendo. Um, <clears throat> when I approved this project as part of this, the group, I knew there would be changes and modifications to it. And when I learned there was opposition to the land exchange at your board, I was surprised. And I felt compelled to testify this morning, taking time from my job because it is a win, win, win situation. Your staff, 
the Department of Fish and Game staff, Director Bonham, have worked long and hard to bring this to you. Since you've heard this over and over again, there are a couple of things you need to know. I've heard this project twice at the Planning Commission for hours and have heard the same arguments previously. Here's what the conclusion is. It's unrefuted that this is a consolidated project that improves the connectivity of the wildlife. It's unrefuted that it is a massive reduction of edge effects. It is unrefuted that there are 300 acres of free property being given to the state. It's unrefuted that the developer has reduced high-end ranchettes to a more uh, refordable housing. It's unrefuted that the benefits of the new proposed project are superior to the prior project. And it's also unrefuted that this is not going back to the Board of Supervisors for a third bite at the apple. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Great, thank you. Okay, Ben Stone followed by Dave Waters, Dennis Mosier. Ben Stone. Hi, this is Ben Stone. I'm the trails coordinator with the San Diego Mountain Biking Association. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, I've worked with the applicant for the last several years on their trails plan. I can say from my experience, the applicant has bent over backwards to take public feedback and work with all interested parties. Within the development, there are several important trail connections that we as an organization support that are part of the broader uh, San Diego County trails plan. Uh, on a side note, I just want to note that there was a concerted effort uh, to campaign across the state to attempt to get other land trusts to sign on to letters against this transfer. Uh, much of the information offered was, in my opinion, not accurate uh, depiction of this transfer. Uh, I, I know this because several organizations that um, I'm involved with or colleagues are involved with reached out to me uh, for more information. I know this is a complicated issue. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we do support, uh, the trails that are put forward in this plan and, and this transfer. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Dave Waters. Good morning. I'm Dave Waters, vice president of GDCI. I wanted to respond to some key questions raised at your August hearing. The questions were thoughtful and we listened closely. First, regarding the legality of the exchange. The legal staff at U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, CDFW, and WCB agree that the proposed exchange meets all state and federal legal requirements. In addition, the San Diego Superior Court upheld CDFW's de decision to enter this dispute resolution agreement. Simply, there are no legal impediments to the exchange. Second, some asked if the Section 6 grant precludes the land exchange. The answer is no, it does not. Legal staff at the service, CDFW, and WCB all agree on this point. In fact, the service concluded under the land exchange, quote, the original objectives of the grant awards will be maintained. Third, some question whether the land exchange satisfies the Public Resources Code habitat value requirement. It does, as concluded in CDFW's land conversion evaluation, a document approved by at least 10 officials at CDFW before being submitted to the WCB, including Carrie Lewis of the Lands Program, Regional Manager Ed Perk, Deputy Director for Wildlife and Fisheries Stafford Lair, and Director Bonham. Fourth, some have claimed that the proposed exchange would set a bad precedent. This is false. The WC has approved land exchanges with developers in the past when doing so resulted in a conservation benefit. This request sets no new precedent. Finally, some commentators claim due to vegetation mapping errors, the GDCI parcels have less biological value than documented. That claim turned out to be false. Additional field inspections in September 2020 confirmed the biological value of GDCI's exchange parcels. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service concurred with this determination. In summary, to your thoughtful discussions in August, the benefits of the land exchange have been confirmed by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, CDFW, and WCB staff. Therefore, we request that you rely on the st your staff recommendation and approve this exchange. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Dennis Mosier, followed by Jim Jackson and Patricia Schuler. Schuyler. Dennis? Good morning. I'm Dennis Moser with the GDCI team. I'm also an architect, community planner, and past member of the MSCP working group. I'm speaking to address the question of whether a no vote today would preclude development in Proctor Valley. The simple answer is no. 
The land exchange, as you know, is an alternative to the original county approved 2019 project. If the WCB denies the land exchange, we will move forward to implement that MSCP hardline development designated plan. And please understand that over 15 alternatives have been studied in detail over the years, including those suggested by EHL. There is no other feasible, acceptable land exchange alternative beyond that presented today. Some may have suggested that the 2019 project can be stopped simply by refusing to grant an easement for Proctor Valley Road. Not true. If we're unable to acquire the additional easement from the state, we'll improve the existing county road in its current alignment and easement. Some have also suggested that a denial of the land exchange will prevent us from securing take authorization. Also not true. The service has stated that to receive a take permit, we simply need to meet uh, their issuance criteria any, under any legal means. We can in fact meet the criteria of both the service and the department for PB 1, 2, and 3. Nonetheless, we sincerely hope you will approve this land exchange today. It creates a better preserved design of more acreage with enhanced wildlife corridors. It creates a better MSCP and it creates a better community. The staff experts at the service, county, and department all agree with that conclusion. Your WCB staff agrees with that conclusion. We know you value their expertise. We ask that you honor their recommendation and vote yes. Thank you. Great, thank you. Jim Jackson. Good morning, I'm Jim Jackson representing GDCI. The state, the service, and the county represent the three public agencies that were instrument, instrumental in creating the MSCP. Today, I want to assure you that the land exchange satisfies the basic tenets of this MSCP. For example, the land exchange would not remove any land from preserve. In 2003, the state purchased over 1,400 acres in Otay Ranch from a developer. Some of this land was designated for preserve, and some of it was designated as hardline development. The 219-acre state-owned exchange parcel was designated hardline development and logically surrounded on three sides by development as well. This parcel not now and has never been designated as hardline preserve. It has always been planned as the heart of Village 14, not the crown jewel of the preserve. The MSCP foundational documents embed flexibility, adaptive management, and many other forward-thinking guidelines. For example, we're here today because of the functioning conflict resolution process. We're also here today because land exchanges were one of the specific MSCP tools. And we're here today out of the MSCP's respect for private property rights and lofty MSCP goal of preservation compatibility with development. All public partners in the MSCP have agreed that the land exchange would not degrade the biological function of the preserve. On the contrary, it will add acreage to the preserve, facilitate connectivity, and improve the preserve's overall function. It is better for the preserve. These same MSCP partners and the WCP staff you respect are asking for your approvals of this land exchange. Please honor their recommendation today. Thank you. Thank you. Patricia Schuyler. Yes, hi, my name is Patricia Schuyler. I work for DUDEC. I am the county approved biologist for the Otay Ranch Village 14 project. Our firm has been involved with the MSCP since its inception and has performed biological analysis throughout Otay Ranch for over 30 years. Our analysis for this project has been challenged repeatedly by EHL and Hamilton Biological based on perimeter review of the project's area. Having spent hundreds, in fact, thousands of hours on the property, I can attest that the scientific reports prepared by our biologists are sound and our field work is thorough. Three biologists, myself included, another senior biologist and a senior restoration biologist, all of whom are county certified, revisited the areas of alleged mismapping. Using the county vegetation classification system and descriptions, we found the vast majority of the site has not changed since the original field work was conducted and some of the minor revisions actually resulted in more up-tiered habitat. Our site visit concluded that there's no need to change CDFW's land conversion evaluation, the county's final EIR, or the services findings that the land exchange is biologically equal or superior. 
As such, our biological analysis and results remain the same, and we 100% stand by our work product. Thank you for the opportunity to conclusively state these facts. The land exchange the land is better exchange. than what the MSC envisioned, and I hope you vote yes. Great, thank you. Uh, and I just like to point out, we do. It's we're at the bottom of or 11:30 now, and we do have about 20 minutes left of speakers. So I would like to ask, uh, you know, if you'd accommodate and just briefly uh, go through your comments, uh, so we don't lose a quorum starting at noon. Uh, we do have one member dropping off at noon, another one dropping off at 12:15. I would like to ask that, you know, if your comment has already been said by another speaker, just register your your opposition or support. That would be helpful. Uh, or if you have new information to impart, please do that. But please recognize the time crunch that we're under. Thank you. And next, I'll call on Michael Huff. Good morning, board members. I am Michael Huff, Dudex Fire Protection Planning Team Lead. We prepared fire protection plans for the original project and the land exchange project, and our analysis concluded that the land exchange results in a more consolidated and contiguous preserve and a more compact clustered development pattern with improved fire safety. We developed appropriate customized project level fire safety features. Many of these same features are acknowledged to reduce fire risk and improve protection of preserve areas. Preventing vegetation fires is an important aspect of conservation management, and the consolidated land exchange design improves the preserve's fire safety through a reduced wildland urban interface, effective fuel modification buffers, and state-of-the-art ignition resistant and sprinkler-equipped structures, providing important protections and support for habitat conservation. San Diego County Fire Protection District's independent analysis concurs with DUDEX Fire Protection Plan's conclusions. In Chief Meacham's public testimony, he stated, quote, when we supported the original project, we did an extensive evaluation of the fire risks, including looking at the fire protection plan, our third party consultant in coordination with the Sheriff's Department. The revised project that is before us today, in my opinion, provides increased fire safety with the removal of planning area 16. We've reduced the edge effect of the area where the homes meet the wildland by nearly 13 miles. We've lowered the number of homes that are exposed and we've also shortened the evacuation distance to the city of Chula Vista to approximately 1.3 miles. Answering the board's question whether the land exchange alternative is a fire safe community, the chief went on to state, the revised project also increases the density and clusters development again by reducing that edge effect. Yes, we believe that development is fire safe, end quote. Thank you, I'll be available should there be any other questions regarding fire protection planning work. Thank you. Uh, Shelby Howard. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, please go forward. Perfect. Hi, good morning. I'm Shelby Howard, Principal Biologist at Helix Environmental Planning with 20 years of experience here in San Diego in biological consulting and listed species, including Kino. A couple of clarifications. It needs to be clarified that Proctor Valley is considered by the service to be part of an, a Kino occurrence complex, but not a core area. Uh, we've already talked about the ecological benefits to Kino, including additional conserved habitat and better preserve design. I will say that Helix worked in collaboration with the service and the department to develop the Kino conservation strategy, which establishes the management approach for Kino and the restoration of two additional acres of Kino habitat. I wanted to clarify there are examples of successful Kino habitat restoration, including those that are being completed currently by the service, which we evaluated, our restoration approach is based on those successful restoration efforts. The land exchange in combination with the, with the conservation strategy provides funding that more than doubles the funding provided for management under the MSCP. Finally, it's important to note that the service will grant take authorization through the implementation of the land exchange and it's determined that the land exchange coupled with the conservation strategy will promote the recovery of the Kino and is consistent with the stated objectives of the cooperative agreement and the section six grant. I agree with the conclusions made by the service and the department that the land exchange achieves important conservation goals and achieves significant conservation benefit to multiple species, including Kino. And I support their recommendations. Thank you. Great, thank you. Rainy Hunter. 
Good morning. I'm Rainy Hunter with RH Consulting Group, and I'm speaking to you today about the merits of the land exchange. Many of my comments have already been made by others, so I just wanted to reiterate my support for the land exchange and let you know that um, having worked on Otay Ranch since 1990, it's important to note that Otay Ranch has been an incredible success in both conservation and providing needed, needed housing. I live in the area and I urge you to vote yes on the land exchange. Thank you. Great, thank you. Mark Dillon. Barry Jones. Hi, my name is uh, Barry. Oh, you cut out. Uh, I was I'm with some of the principal biologists overseeing chemo uh, surveys for the project. Uh, he had spent over 1,000 hours in the field over a two-year period, compiling very, very detailed data on chemo resources, uh, distribution um, on the land exchange parcels that show that the exchange lands do support high-quality chemo habitat, and that there's actually more chemo resources conserved under the land exchange than what would be um, uh, conserved under the approved project. And that's been based on very intensive survey efforts. I concur with the findings made by both CDFW and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The land exchange will result in biological equivalency and support the staff's recommendation for land exchange approval. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We have two more. Uh, Christopher Carnes. Christina Ku. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? I okay, can. great. You know, thank you. Um, yes, I, I just feel it, it's uh, very ironic that you know the uh, the cover photo is this beautiful, cr pristine wilderness area, and um, in this area it is going to be um, is planned by the fish and wildlife to build luxury homes on. I mean, we're looking at this picture, and you know, should motivate us all to value and protect it. And those um, who obviously support this exchange it clearly show their loyalties are with big money and development. Um, it's that, it's they're uh, definitely not on the side of protecting wilderness and wildlife. And, um, you know, people who are speaking here, it's all for just money and economic growth. And it's just very sad to hear. And I, I know that you folks on this board, um, you're the ones who have the duties to help protect. Um, the wildlife can't speak for themselves, and that's why you're there to find out how to best protect them. And I noticed a photo with uh, construction, the north and south wildlife corridors are all being blocked too. And they're talking about the area being uh, dispersed and they want to have it more compacted. That doesn't make sense either. I mean, animals roam. I mean, we need all that land for them. <laughs> so it, it makes no sense to, you know, restrict them to one area. And um, there's just a lot of oxymorons here. I mean, building more homes to preserve more land, it just, to your, your average citizen, it does not make sense. And you all know that does not make sense. I know they use fancy concepts and words to try to disguise that, but it does not. And you should be listening to all the environmentalists and wildlife experts who don't have a, you know, motivation for money. It's all motivated by money, and those folks are not. And I think they present some very useful information for you to consider. And I definitely hope right. you vote no. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up is Bill Gaines. Can you hear me? I can. Very good. Thank you. Members of the board. Executive Director Don Lee and Wildlife Conservation Board staff. My name is Bill Gaines, and I'm speaking on behalf of the San Diego County Wildlife Federation. Today, a nonprofit organization made up of numerous conservation clubs and organizations within the greater San Diego County area. To begin, the proposed exchange is not as advertised. Project materials imply that this proposal is straightforward exchange of 531 acres of developers owned land to the state for roughly 220 acres of state owned reserve lands. However, most of the lands proposed for transfer to the state, as much as 200 acres or more, are already lands preserved under the County of San Diego Multiple Species Conservation Plan. 
As such, as others have already pointed out, this proposed transfer, if approved, would actually result in a net loss of conservation acres. Making matters worse, the roughly 220 acres of reserve lands that the proposal would require DFW to transfer. Bill, we lost property. you. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Finish, please. Sorry about that. Making matters worse, the roughly 220 acres of reserve lands that the proposal would require DFW to transfer to developers for development would substantially impact habitat connectivity between reserved lands and other protected lands within the San Diego National Wildlife Refuge. Finally, the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA, signed into law 50 years ago this year, is California's landmark environmental law. Its purpose is to ensure land use decisions, such as the one in front of you today, take into account the full impacts of development on California's natural habitats and resources. However, if approved, this proposal would result in a significant habitat loss and substantial impact habitat connectivity without proper CEQA review or analysis of these impacts. Finally, in closing, the need to protect the state's remaining wildlands from development has never been more urgent than it is today, as has been made evident by the governor's recent signing of Executive Order N-8220, which establishes a goal of protecting Please finish up. within California by the year 2020. It's because of all these reasons that we strongly urge the Wildlife Conservation Board to deny this proposed land exchange today. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, uh, that's all. Rob Vandehoek here to speak. I've been on the whole time listening. I spoke at general public comment earlier, but I've been missed here. Okay, please go. Thank you, uh, Robert Vandehoek. Uh, a wildlife biologist and an archaeologist uh, in cultural resources management. Uh, land exchanges are, are a difficult thing. I first learned about them in 1989 at the federal government, and I evaluated 23 parcels to be sold off by the federal government for uh, acquiring land on the Carrizo Plain. I found all 23 parcels to have um, wildlife, native plant value, archaeology resource values, and I couldn't do the reports. I got labeled a whistleblower but I did stop the land exchanges from happening because they all did have value and they haven't been sold. And I also pr provided information to the realtors at the BLM that uh, each of these uh, land exchanges were going to lose money and operate in the red. I think this is already operating in the red too here um, because of all the lawsuits and different planning over the decades. So I don't think it's uh, you should that should be evaluated in a cost benefit analysis. As an archaeologist, but not speaking on behalf of the Native American people, uh, the word um, jamhamul is actually being mispronounced incorrectly. And my linguistics anthropology background, it's the name of the village there. And I think this meeting should have started with uh, acknowledging Native American peoples and that this ecological reserve is named for the, um, the, the Native peoples. So um, the Diagueno um, peoples and the uh, anyways, I'll go on a little bit, a uh, few more seconds on, on Native Americans. So this is really um, an important place and you shouldn't be voting on, you, you, should, you have it, a part of CEQA requires doing a fully, uh, not just archaeology, but speaking to um, the Native peoples who are still here and live in the San Diego region and need to be uh, talked about and embraced and um, supported. Now the word Kino in the name of the butterfly is also a Native American word, but from South America and relates to a plant that is related to them. Now, um, my last thoughts are the spadefoot toad buffers uh, or um, uh, what you have called- Please, please conclude your comments. Thank okay, you. What you've called edge and fragment and corridors is not necessary for the, the um, the fairy shrimp or the spadefoot toad. This land would not be sold. Okay, all please, please conclude. Right and I just commercial developers money insane. That's CDMI. Thank you. Please. All right. Thank you. All right. That concludes all of the speaker cards and or hands raised that we have on record. I would like to close the public. Sir, session. I have my hand raised. I have not been called on. Yeah, I haven't who been are called you? on either, but. Hi, Alex? Demir Chaparro. Here I, and I was called on, and I'm so sorry I could not get off mute and on um, uh, in time. But I just want to register my vote in support of the exchange. And I am a native San Diegan. I'm a realtor, and I think some of the comments were mentioned earlier about housing. We do have a definite need, and this exchange 
makes so much sense. And I, I, I all of the um, efforts that both sides have put in, but I think we have to work together. And this, uh, uh, this proposal is that's been brought to you by the uh, and approved by the WCB and federal and the local planning that's gone into it, I think is really important to look at because we do have a housing shortage in our county and I deal with it every day with my clients and this is a community that uh, makes sense to and a great solution. So I just hope as you work forward in the future that you take a cohesive approach and a collaborative approach with it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Alex Coffey, I see your hand raised. Please go. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Alex Coffey. I'm a concerned California citizen. Thank you to the board for taking the time. Uh, there are those who are, have a much more refined scientific and legal perspective on, on this discussion than myself. So I speak today purely as a citizen reacting to some of today's blatant suspect and slanted comments from those in favor of this proposal. Board members, you must deny this land swap of unprecedented circumstance. To Chuck Bonham's early comment, uh, I fundamentally do not agree with his characterization that this supposed exception will not be repeated elsewhere. Precedent breaking decisions inherently set precedent. Just listen to the comments by San Diego Board of Supervisor member Greg Cox, who could not even give this community the respect of his time to stay on the line to hear our concerns. Greg Cox making veiled threats of why would any private landowner work with CDFW or state conservation organizations in the future if this land swap is denied. He makes it clear that this land swap does in fact set precedent. There's an inherent irony for this exchange to be presented with the looming threat of GDCI moving forward with a plan that would surround the currently protect protected area with development, when in fact that original proposal is far from guaranteed it's not an explicitly either or scenario and that land exchange that's being offered uh, are they themselves in fact urbanized edges connectivity is the only proponent is the only item that proponents for this are hanging their hats on but connectivity alone cannot account for the loss of critical habitat and as has been stated by others much of this connected land has already been protected canned lines we've heard today from proponents in favor of this, like more collaboration, less conflict, a deal is a deal, our priority is the human race. Not one of these are the mission of the California Wildlife Conservation Board. Your mission is to conserve critical habitat and endangered species, and that's what we're asking you to do. 29 land trusts and thousands of citizens oppose this land swap. Okay. Please vote no, thank you. Thank you. Okay, folks, uh, we're hearing a lot of the same information over and over. Uh, I just like to ask if you don't have anything new to add, just please register your uh, position, either opposed or support. I would, the I and the board, I think would really appreciate that. Uh, so, Tom I Pollock. Have something new to add. Tom Pollock. Yes, can you hear me, John? Yes. Yes, my name is uh, Tom Pollock. I'm a retired Department of Fish and Wildlife wildlife biologist. It's clear to me that our Department of Fish and Wildlife is doing a disservice to the members of the Wildlife Conservation Board and especially to the public they serve. This land exchange is being brought forward by CDFW and the developer is, an, is a distinct project under both the California Environmental Quality Act and the Natural Communities Conservation Planning Act. Section 2826 of the NCCP Act provides, nothing in the NCCP Act a project in a natural community conservation planning area from the California Environmental Quality Act or otherwise alters or affects the applicability of CEQA. I would ask the WCB to reject this land exchange proposal until the California Department of Fish and Wildlife correctly implements its duties under CEQA and the NCCP Act. Uh, I appreciate the work of the WCB. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sophie Mulholland. What do you say? Can I add one Hi. thing? Yeah, just a minute. I'll call on you in a minute. 
Sophie. Hi, um, good morning. I'm Sophie Mulholland. Um, I was president of Story River Lens Trust for 20 years. I have my now with them. Um, I know that from experience, the scientific and biological studies and person to person expertise that you require before you fund a project. And your projects are for conservancy and for reserves. It seems to me that this exchange suggests that, they, that we would erode public trust in um, perpetuity conservation and make it difficult for land trusts to do their work. I uh, would like to deny. Thank you. Thank you. All right, one more comment. Who was asking to? Yeah, this is Hello? John Shikui. I'm the owner of Stormwater Pros San Diego. I support the Rancho Hamul land exchange because it improves the fire defensibility for new and surrounding communities. And with the 70% reduction in wildland interface, the land exchange creates a safer community that's defendable against wildfire. So for these reasons, we need the board to approve the land exchange today. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi yes. there. I, I, just, I, I do have a couple of new information um, that I just wanted to add. I mean, number one is this whole Who development. You, nowhere does this. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. This is Christina Koo, and oh, I'm you're... a concerned uh, resident. Yes. And, um, you know, I don't think people have mentioned about this development. Nowhere um, does it say where all this water is going to come from. I mean, there's an extreme water shortage problem, and um, there's to sustain th this luxury home development where no water reservoirs have been built. So there are just a lot of these very, you know, uh, important issues that are just missing from this whole picture. And uh, lastly, um, I really resent the scare tactics that's being used by these folks, that if you don't agree, there will be litigation and that you will be punished. And um, this is really uh, very aggressive, um, you know, passive aggressive type of negotiations going, going on. I hope people stand up and um, no fear of litigation. When you're on the right side, you've got all the facts and science on your side. We will prevail. Thank you. Hey, John, this is Chuck. So yes. let me yes. just call a process question. We can pause for a moment. You have told us that board members will be potentially running into conflicts at noon. I recommend the board itself take a moment and just confirm process between itself. Again, I'm not in a voting space here, but before we get to actually noon and it gets a little disorganized, I think that's an important check in. And I'd like to ask if the vice chair would just facilitate that process discussion between board members. Uh, Thank you, Chuck. And John, this is Gail. I, I would like to just second Chuck's. Okay. Process question, and and I, I, I am one of the board members that that does have a hard stop at twelve fifteen. So, I'd like to talk about if it goes beyond that, what our plan is, and when we, how long we would recess for, and what time we would come back. Okay. And Sean, I'd like to weigh in as well if I can. I'm I have to leave at noon. Um, maybe one suggestion is we do a straw poll to see if it's close, and if it's if it's not close, then we have a vote. Um, if it's close, then maybe there's some discussion and it goes on. That's one one option anyway. But um, and or or I want to know if I can vote uh, yeah, before I leave at noon. Either way. Okay. Does anybody other Ch board members have questions? I just this is Diane. I can stay. Um, I would like to have the have the board have at least a few minutes for us to make comments that we might want to make before we take a vote but um i don't have to leave so i'm not under the same pressure others are hi this is uh alina um john yeah i agree i mean if if we could give a, a few minutes for board members to be able to make comments um can uh colin weigh in on the question that eric posed um on whether or not uh, he can put his vote in prior to, uh, you know, taking, I guess, the Archer. full vote, yeah, prior to leaving, or, I mean, is there any kind of a proxy situation, or do we have to adjourn and, so and reconvene? We, sorry, yeah, we, we need to have a formal motion in order for member Sklar to register his vote. Um, with respect to the project. So, okay. um, I mean, in my mind, I, I think there's a few things that 
the board could do. I, I know that you all want to discuss and, and I think that you should. Um, you know, I we could I'm not sure what member Sklar's timing or anyone else's is. We could theoretically take a recess and come back this afternoon to the extent board members are able to. Um, I think Eric shake shook his head no. So yeah, um, it's really good. I can come back at about I can try to come back by 1230 if the if it's still going on then. Um, but uh, you know, maybe I, I just tell you how I, I am certain how I'm going to vote. And, I, and, and while it's required that I listen to that the members listen to public comment, it's not required that we discuss. And um, that's an option, right? And so I know that I, I you know, that I, what I can do is I can tell you what my vote is. And maybe if uh, it turns out it's a, you know, it's it's a tie, um, then 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 we have to do something else. That's that's one option as well. Can I, Colin? Can I ask this question? Can we? have the official motion we'll take eric's vote and then we'll go back to board member comments with the with the motion on the table i think we can it, it's unusual um but I, but i think if if the board um makes a motion to adopt that procedure that we could certainly move forward with that um john are there further public comments or can we not that I've seen. Proceed no. to making a decision. Okay. I think we no can further proceed. Public all of, comments. No, all of the speaker cards were read. Uh, all of the hands that were raised that we saw uh, were taken so, care yeah. of, uh, okay. and then there so, were a couple okay. others that just spoke up. John, so, so I, I, I think well, we're good. It's okay then. I'd like to make a motion, um, and if, if there's a second, that I'll vote, and then when I have to peel off, you guys can continue to discuss, and then vote after that if that works. Go ahead. I mean, why don't why don't we just start and see where we land? So why don't you go ahead with your more motion? I move to deny. I'll second. I, the, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to second that. So Mary, yeah, Mary. Uh, Kreisman, board member Kreisman, uh seconded. So uh, any board member discussion, or should or should I? Call yeah. It? I would, I actually do have some comments with that, if now's the right time. Mary, I don't, I, I don't know if I'll be able to wait on until you're done. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to cast my vote to deny and consistent with my motion. I'll listen as long as I can. And I'll try to come back at 1230, see if it's still going on. Thank you, Eric. Great. Thank you, Eric. And Colin, oh, Colin, that's okay. We don't need to, sorry. I know this is a little bit out of process or order, but do we need to, have well um you know board member Sparks here have a motion kind of approving this process that he leaves as the author of the motion i'm just trying to make sure i mean that you know i i think that the motion as a general rule is we, we take the motion to um approve the staff's recommendation and i i think that would probably be a more appropriate uh motion and then member Sklar would register a no or a deny vote okay. relative to the staff's recommendation. Be, and the reason I suggest that is if it turns out that a, a majority do not want to deny, we would then have to come back with a second. No, got it. OK, Colin, that, that makes sense. So let me withdraw my motion, make the motion uh, to accept the staff report. Look for a second. I would second the accepting the staff report. And then I vote uh, I vote no. Okay. But I think Mr. Sklar and um, Mr. Mills, I think we actually have to call a roll. I, I don't think yeah. he can just yes. take his vote. Right, right. John, so um, if, let can me let me recommend to... an addendum to the motion okay. that in the interest of Member Sklar's time, that the board um, accept Member Sklar's vote at this time and hold discussion and finish the roll call vote at such time as the remaining board members agree to. Colin, I just want to double check. Is it is it permissible for someone to make a motion that they're voting against? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. OK, yeah, I just wanted to double check on that. OK. OK, so I amend my, I amend my motion uh, as such. Is there a second or do you accept the second member Miller? I do, I do. OK. I Oh, the amendment. Okay, great. Um, so then John, John would just call 
the role relative to member Sklar at this time so he can register his vote on the staff's recommendation. Okay, and then in terms of then board member comments that would come after the roll right. call. Correct. Got it. Okay. <laughs> and I hate to confuse things, but I'm going to ask. But you got, I've actually got to leave. So can we can we can somebody call the roll and ask my name and I'll go ahead. Uh, uh, John, do you want to do the roll call, please? Member Baki, you you can make the the roll. I think oh, John, okay. John, I, I don't hear John, so I don't know if he's having technical difficulties or Rebecca well, can do I was, it. But I, I got it now. You hear me now? Oh, yes, yes. we can hear you now. But just clarification. Do I call all the names, Colin, or just board member Sklar and board member Miller? I, I'm sorry, John, you cut out there for a sec. All we're asking is just a roll call for member Sklar to register his vote on okay. uh, the motion. Okay. Uh, board member Sklar. I vote no. Thank you all. I'm sorry for the, the, the hassle of this call. I appreciate it. I'll try to get back as soon as I can. Okay. And then also, I know board member Miller has to leave as well, so I will register her vote as well. So, board member Miller. Yes. And I can stay on for 15 minutes, and then I can also come back at 3 because I definitely. Definitely do want to hear the discussion. So, okay. depending on how long it goes back on for. Great. Okay. Uh, I think okay. that's good. Everybody else is okay. Yeah. Yes, we, I think can we hearing move to board comments now. Or yes. Oh, geez. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, move yeah, to board so we'll comments now, board Alina. Board comments. Oh, sorry, John. Yeah. Then, yeah. You wanna. Yeah. We can move into board member comments now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Mary, uh, I see your hand up. Yes. Um, thank you. And, you know, just want to reiterate, appreciate everybody's grace and flexibility. I know people have spent their morning giving testimony and comments and uh, spent a lot of time meeting with us. Um, this is tough. Um, and I think, you know, it's hard there's been some personal comments this morning and i just want to say i think everybody involved ultimately has good intentions around this um and really is trying to do the right thing um and that's you know we're we're in a tough place around this and i think it speaks to the trust that i have in the staff and the department that we're so rarely here we're so rarely in a place where we have a lot of different groups on both sides um, that we have to weigh very conflicting information and opinions. And just want to appreciate and acknowledge the hard work that staff puts into these projects and all of the due diligence. That means that we're just, we very rarely have to have a conversation like this and make a, a more contentious decision like this. So just want to acknowledge and, and appreciate that. Um, and also want to say that I, you know, I, I really do believe um, that staff in the department, um, you know, believe this is the best possible deal that we can get for the environment and for our wildlife at this moment. I think, um, you know, I, I get that. And I think we, we acknowledge we're rolling the dice a little bit here um, with a decision one way or the other on is it the best possible? Is it not the best possible? Um, and in thinking through this and, and talking with all the stakeholders, there have been conversations around, 
um, you know, we went through a good faith process. We acted in good faith and we went through a good faith process. Um, and so what would that signal if at this point this deal is shot down? And I think it's important to acknowledge this vote is part of that process. The process isn't over. We're still in that process. And WC board members voting, taking in relevant facts and making the best decision they can is still a part of that process. Um, and so just want to acknowledge that, that the process isn't done. We're there right now still. Um, I think, you know, when we ask a question of like, is this the best deal for the environment? Is the best deal we can get? Is this what uh, our wildlife and our environment needs at this moment? Um, it's tough, I think, given the climate crisis and the climate crisis on our ecosystems, on our wildlife, on our environment, we have to start pushing for more. We have to kind of change and actually increase our standard for how we're preserving and conserving land and how we are being more stringent about where and how development happens in our states. With that said, you know, I don't sit on the WCB board um, to approve development projects. That's that's not what I'm comfortable doing. It's not a role I want to be in regularly. Um, and I'm going to be voting no on this project because I think fundamentally it's not the best deal for the environment. It may be the best deal we feel like we can get at this point. Um, I don't think it's quite good enough. Um, and I know that's rolling a dice. Um, I know that there's a chance that this goes a different way, uh, but I, I, I'm not comfortable approving um, this transaction that will result in development for some really critical lands for our wildlife, our species, and in return for them, for us, um, as we're all very interdependent in this moment. Um, so I am going to be voting no, not an easy decision, really respect and want to acknowledge the hard work that the department, Chuck, John, and staff um, put into this. It's not lightly that I'm doing this um, and just want to acknowledge all the stakeholders from the conservation community to the landowner developers to the board of supervisors just the hours and time and intense work put into this to come up with the best possible results. Um, and, you know, it, it's a tough position to be in, but I, I do want to just um, acknowledge that and appre appreciate that while also saying, I don't think we're quite there yet. I'm not comfortable approving this project um, given the impact on uh, wildlife and our environment that we know will result. Thank you. Alina. Great. Uh, Alina, I think you're on mute. So sorry, habit. <laughs> Board member Colburn. Sure, thank you. Um, I, I am also going to be voting no, and I, I wanted to uh, explain a little bit what my thinking is. Um, and I and I also wanted to say I, I do really appreciate and respect um, the board the board staff and the department staff and all the work that you put into it and I agree with Mary's comments that it's rare that we find ourselves in in this kind of a position. Um, I also want to thank all the the public that commented today and and for you know the vast majority of you were really good about keeping your comments limited to the two minutes. And I really appreciate that. Um, as has been noted, the uh, the LCE. The staff who worked on that did acknowledge that the that the lands that are being exchanged, um, the lands that were that we would be giving up, were of uh, higher biological value, superior biological value to those that we would be receiving in exchange. And I appreciate what uh, the department, the points they made about the the kind of on balance how they were looking at connectivity and edge effects and felt that overall it would be uh, biologically superior. But um, I have to say that I just, I, I don't agree with the conclusion that was reached in that regard. And I, and I think it's significant that virtually all of the conservation community in the state also <laughs> disagrees with the conclusion. Um, be, and I know con connectivity is very important, but I do not think that just coming up with a better reserve design is going to offset the loss of critical habitat. 
Um, but the really overriding concern for me was, I think what's really at stake here is the public's faith and trust in the integrity of the board and, and, our, and our governmental processes. And I'm really concerned that we not approve a project that is going to um, reduce that confidence in the WCB as, as a, a partner with integrity. Um, I am concerned about the precedent issue. I appreciate that sometimes there are land exchanges that are appropriate and we've had some land exchanges in the past. I think that this one is fundamentally different than those. And so I, I am concerned and, I, and I'm just concerned that when we say that something is permanently protected in perpetuity, we have to mean what we say. And that if in that the exceptions where we where we where we um, do a land exchange, uh, that there should be a very high bar that we're meeting for that, where it's very clear that the conservation benefits um, exceed, you know, the, the original um, project. So, uh, for all those reasons, um, I, I'm unfortunately uh, voting no today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Board Member Pavley. I saw your hand up. Do you want to say a few comments? Yes. Um, since we're going down the row, if that's that's uh, correct. Um, I just wanted to double down on what Mary and um, Diane were just speaking about, and that's uh, the the um, well-directed uh, intentions of staff to articulate the problem and try to deal with the difficult situation through a, a dispute resolution uh, process. And it ends up at the WCB, which uh, none of us signed up for, uh, but it is here. And most of us are appointed because why we have background in protecting open space and wildlife. That's where most of our uh, values and heart is. And so a, a challenging process, but I wanted to offer a few comments. I do have some background in the last 40 years of local and state land use planning that may, may be relevant. Um, I read carefully most all the information, even as late as 10 o'clock last night. I listened to all four hours of this hearing. Um, I did pay particular attention to the WCB written report. I assume that was done by uh, legal counsel. Um, but in my opinion, this board is not simply being asked to approve the land exchange of properties. It, it's really not not that simple and uh, several of you have articulated some of the challenges with that. I am concerned about the unintended consequences of approving this agreement. I am concerned about what's been called both the direct and also the indirect effects of approving this land exchange. I do think, in my opinion at least, that this will undermine public trust on when public funds are used to buy property, protect it in perpetuity. When I see WCB, especially using public funds, mostly through resource bonds, to buy a piece of property, whether it's uh, wherever it is in California, I would assume, and I would think the public assumes, that would be in perpetuity and not subject to land exchanges, well-intentioned or not. Uh, that is not, to me, the use of um, public dollars that were voted on for express purposes. That was part of the reason I kept bringing up in on the November hearing uh, the use of monies from the WCB and others to purchase conservation agreements. I wanted to make sure that no matter who the property owner was, that those would stay in effect in perpetuity, getting to appreciate um, how uh, land that you assumed is protected could be challenged later on um, uh, for other reasons to change what you assumed was protected. And I think the voters in California um, uh, are relying <clears throat> on the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Wildlife Conservation Board sort of to be the last line of defense in protecting open space and, and wildlife. So I want Californians to trust WCB actions in the future. I certainly trust our directors, both of its Fish and Wildlife and our 
um, at, and at the WCB and staff who um, were dealt a, a difficult challenge in this dispute resolution agreement process. But I do think it opens up uh, the potential and the precedent. If I was a developer who bought a piece of property, um, realizing that there's the opportunity to negotiate through either heavy, heavy handed strategy or uh, personal connections with people and reopen that up. I think, I think that's a challenge. And the last thing I comment is the timeline on this project sort of was interesting to me. So in 2003, the WCB and U.S. Fish and Wildlife with matching funds purchased this property. That's a long time ago. Developer didn't buy it till 2014, knowing full well what that outline of their potential development was going to look look like. Maybe not ideal for them, um, but they went ahead. They went ahead and they got the approval of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors in 2019. And during that time between 14 and 19, there was a lot of discussion in the background information with U.S. Fish and Wildlife and WCB and California Department of Fish and Wildlife to maybe resolve some of those questions. They were never resolved. So after the approval, then uh, through this dispute resolution and probably some threatened litigation or wanting to avoid litigation, uh, this deal was reached. So my concern is the precedent. And for that reason, I will be uh, voting no today. Thank you. Are there any other comments from board members? Okay, seeing then, I'll just add um, a few comments of my own. Uh, so I think it just as um, the uh, a number of the board members have already shared, uh, I think, you know, I just want to thank uh, the staff, um, everyone who spoke today, all of the letters of support, all the letters of uh, opposition. Um, I know there was a, a tremendous amount of work done um, to really make sure that um, your voice was heard. And so I just want to thank you for all of the time and effort that you put into this process. Um, I do uh, also just really want to acknowledge the hard work of the staff. Um, I, you know, John and, and everyone else, um, you know, you really, uh, did the, the due diligence, um, of, uh, in reading the staff report and making sure that we received all the documents, you know, in a timely fashion. So just really want to thank the diligence and the hard work of the staff, um, in this, in this process. Um, my vote today is going to be uh, to oppose the land exchange, and I think it comes down for me on a, uh, just the very fundamental issue that, um, you know, we approved a project where we spent public funding to protect uh, this critical habitat and that there is a trust and obligation of conservation and of protection. Um, of the project. And although, um, you know, land exchanges are uh, sometimes, um, uh, you know, necessary, I do think that those cases um, should be very rare and, um, and that there should be no doubt uh, that there is significant value as a result of the exchange. Um, I do not feel that this met that threshold um, and in fact, uh, would facilitate, I think, as we've heard, you know, market rate housing um, on, on property. So for me, um, again, it goes back to the, the trust that the voters of California placed in approving uh, these bond monies and the funds that go to protecting um, the important wildlife and conservation habitat um, across our great state. And so, uh, for that reason, I'm I'm going to be uh, voting no no um, and opposing the the exchange. Thank you. So, will we do the official roll call at this point? Or yeah, I do. Okay. I do see Gail has her hand up. Gail. Oh, Gail. My apologies, uh, Board Member Miller. Please. 
Oh, no, no, my apologies. I, I just wanted to reiterate um, how grateful I am to the team and the staff and to, to Chuck and John for really allowing a, a controversial debate to be respectful and to you, Madam Vice Chair, for, for really allowing disagreement in, in such a positive way. I think it's a model, certainly for, for the rest of the country, and, and I'm grateful that, that we, can, we can have these conversations and respect each other's opinions and, and would, would just like to see us lift up some of this discourse more and more. And I just wanted to build, Madam Vice Chair, on what you were saying and, um, and appreciate the opportunity that, that we can disagree and not disparage each other. So thank you for, for being an example of that. I really appreciate it. Very much agree. Thank you. John, I'll hand it off to you. All right, so we'll go through the, the official vote or open the vote back up and we'll do a roll call vote for the record. So, Elena Bokde? Uh, no. Um, Chuck, uh, Board Member Bonham, recusing? No vote. Uh, Board Member Colborn? No. Board Member Creesman? No. Board Member Miller? Yes. Board Member Pavley? No. And uh, Board Member Sklar did uh, notice his vote earlier, and that was a no vote. So the motion, the staff recommendation does not pass today. Um, Vice Chairman. John, could I? Please, Chuck. Vice Chair, would you, Elena, would you mind if I say something? Yes, please, please. Thank you, Chuck. Okay, just to bring it back to where I started, um, you know, we've heard a variety of perspectives. I trust that each person that engaged as a citizen was doing so with good intentions. I concur with you and Gail. It illustrates the process has an ability to accept differences of views and uh, reach a decision. As everyone departs, just remind yourselves that, you know, we are still in a struggle against a pandemic. We are all Californians. We can have differences of opinions, but our processes and systems, you know, facilitate this kind of engagement. So I. I respect where everyone's at. I respect the way in which people handled today in the prior meeting. So thank you to the fellow board members. It was important for us that you each had your independent voice and the board decided what it wanted to do in the fashion it did. So thank you. Thank you. Great, Great. thank you. Sure. I think we'll take a, a vote to adjourn. And actually, Alina, can I make just one quick comment too? Of and I course, just wanna please, reiterate. John, thank so very much appreciate the comments that the board members had today for staff, not only staff of the Wildlife Conservation Board, but staff of the Department of Fish and Wildlife. And I, I, I've said it before, but you know, recognize that WCB would not be as successful as, as it is without the support of the regional staff and the st staff of the wildlife or the Department of Fish and Wildlife. So I just want to reach out and you know, really thank the department staff for helping the WCB staff provide you the information necessary for you guys to make the decision that you needed to make today. And I appreciate all your your support for staff. And uh, I'm very thankful for the careful deliberation, careful thoughtfulness, and the expertise in which you guys considered this action today and then voted, you know, the way you needed to vote based on what you believed in. So thank you for that. I think it upholds the integrity of WCB. Well, uh, you know, a yes vote would have not jeopardized the integrity of WCB, I don't think, but you know, you guys really were conscious of that and I so much, very much respect that. And so with that, I do wanna just wish everybody a happy holiday season, given the pandemic situation that we're all under. And I just hope that we all have a healthy, safe, and a very happy holiday season. So thank you. Same to you. Thank, thank you, John. You. Yes, I agree. We, uh, 